Now with the call of the game, here's Terry Harvin, Russ Brown, and the voice of the Eagles, Danny Reed. Eagle Nation, it is great to see you again. Another installment of Georgia Southern against Appalachian State on top of the mountain in the shadow of Howard's Knob here in Boone, North Carolina from Kid Brewer Stadium. They just had the coin toss at center. Georgia Southern has won, deferred its option to the second half. So Appalachian State to receive going from right to left towards the open end where they are building the all-new North End Zone facility project for roughly 45 mil. I think about this matchup, and I think more about Georgia Southern. With the adversity these guys have been hit with this season, you can do one of two things, Terry Harvin. You can roll over or you can stand up. The last three weeks, I think we've gotten our answer emphatically. When you have to come together, you have to do so as a family. The Eagles have done that, and it means even more when you're playing your most bitter rival in their house. Oh, yeah, of course, you know the old saying, you throw the throw the records out when you have two rivals like this playing each other, but you be remiss if you did not at least acknowledge how good of a team Appalachian State is. They have not lost since we beat them last year. It's been over a calendar year since they have lost. They've played very consistent all season, both sides of the ball. It's a good squad. We're going to have to play our very best game in order to beat them tonight. Can they do that? that are they up to the challenge? Well, let's hope they are. And uh, we cannot make the mental mistakes. No personal fouls. Can't turn the ball over. Got to keep containment. Got to have a spy on Thomas, right? Got to run the option and see how we do with that. But again, no mental. Don't beat yourself mentally. You know, don't make those mental mistakes. Be beaten on the field. Don't be, be, don't beat yourself. On a Black Thursday in Boone, the Mountaineers responding with their uniforms. Georgia Southern, of course, in that clean, all-white look. The shoes, the socks, the pants, the jerseys, and the alternate helmet with the winged look. It is absolutely gorgeous. Love it. Georgia Southern, as we all well know, they have not won in this facility in 12 years. They've been outscored the last five meetings, 169 to 66. But tonight, it is time to get after that app. You did that for me, didn't you? I certainly did. Fast yeah. spacing out his kickoff team as he's set to put it left to right, but the ball fell off the tee. We're expecting wind gusts maybe as high as 30 miles per hour. The rain is encircling the field almost as if someone is holding a giant spray bottle and just trying to yeah. tick you off enough. <laughs> it's crazy. Jesse Liptrod is going to hold the football for Tyler Bass. He'll have the wind at his back, so I would imagine he'll boot it a long ways. Let's do it one more time from Boone. Darrington Evans is the deepest, one of the best returners in the country, but that goes way out of the end zone. And the Mountaineers begin at the 25-yard line with last year's offensive player of the year, Zach Thomas, at quarterback. He played three games against Georgia Southern last year, knocked out because of a concussion. You know he has waited for this one for just about a year. Major chip on his shoulder. He's very good. He doesn't get frazzled. That's what, that's what really concerns me. It's hard to get to him. And he doesn't lose, lose his composure. From the left hash, Mountaineers go right to left. Three wide receivers out to the right. Pistol formation, Darrington Evans the pistol back. Thomas Clapp of the hands on first and ten. Stretch play right. Evans around the edge up the right side. Has 30, past the 35, and half first down before Rutledge beats him along with Kendrick Duncan. But that's a gain of 14 yards to Darrington Evans right out of the gate. This is a team that averages about 245 yards a game in rushing. Offensive line, like I mentioned, is very good. Here's first and 10 for App at its own 39. Inside zone play for Darrington Evans. Splitting the hashes evenly. Raymond Johnson actually throws down the left tackle, Victor Johnson. Great strength for Raymond. Just a gain of one for Evans up to the 42nd down and nine. And Victor Johnson, by the way, is just six foot five, 300, 295 pounds. Two time first team all conference. He's a good one. Four year starter. Yeah, he's a good one. He's battled some ankle issues, so if App has to throw, maybe Johnson can get around that edge. No score in Boone, less than one minute in. Eagles have lost five in a row here. Five wides, the backfield empty, middle of the hashes, second down and nine at the 40. Thomas quick left, dropped. Corey Sutton was open on a little stick route, but it's almost like the ball was allergic to his hands. Yeah. It's third and nine. Yeah, great route. He just turned around, showed his numbers to Thomas. Thomas put it right where he needed to. He just didn't bring it in. App is 51% on third downs this season. That is number six in the country. It sounds absurd it this does. late in the year. I thought it was a typo when y'all sent that to me. A lot of personnel changes for Georgia Southern. Lane Ecton coming in to run. Evans is actually split to the near side slot. Five wide receivers again. Watch Thomas on the draw. He is very fleet of foot. Play clock shows nine. This is third and nine from the 40. Eagles send four. Thomas steps up short middle. Incomplete again. 
Thomas Hennigan just dropped it. He was headed towards the block A at the 50-yard line, but just like Sutton, he couldn't hold on to the football. I thought we were almost going to get a pick out of it when he, cause he bobbled it up in the air. Again, that should tell you about the weather tonight. Not only is it wet, but it's cold. Got to get a grip on that ball. Remember, App didn't come out until about 45 minutes after Georgia Southern did for warm-up, so maybe they're having a little bit more trouble getting acclimated. Here's the Australian, Xavier Sabach to punt. He'll left footer. Say Wesley Kennedy back deep. Here's the punt coming from his own 39. Kennedy says get away. Actually has to backpedal to avoid it. Hits at the near side, hash 15. Rolls laterally at the 13. And out touches up there, much to the delight of the student section, which is completely packed sitting below us. Four full sections of Mountaineer fans trying to will their team to an 8-0 start for the first time in Sunbelt history. But it's Eagle football when we come back from their own 13. Morris Bank is the presenting sponsor for the 2019 season. Bleed Blue, Bank Blue, Morris Bank. Member FD. I see. Punt goes for 48, no return. Eagle football after this from Learfield IMG College. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Georgia Southern Sports Network. What makes Queensboro Bank the best bank for Georgia Southern University alums? They support the Eagles and they're ready to support your banking needs. Queensboro, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Now the first play for App State went 14 yards, but the next three only gained a yard combined because of two drops from two of the best receivers in the league. Georgia Southern takes its first possession at its own 13, following a punt of 48 yards from Xavier Sabach. No score here in Boone, 13-54 first quarter. I didn't have a problem with the way Kennedy handled that punt, Russ, because with the win, it's going to be hard to field, and they just got a good roll out of the deal. Yeah, it, it's the bounce of the ball. Look, anytime a kick is going in that direction towards the construction side of the field, all bets are off. The wind, it, it, when it's not gusting, is still blowing about 10, 15 miles an hour, so every kick is going to be affected. If you get a wind gust, that thing's going to knuckle and it's going to knock it down. I mean, there's just no way to really know where that ball is going to go. Smart play by Wesley just to get everybody out of the way. Appalachian State got the bounce. You know, maybe it'll bounce our way next time. A lot of fans here, as Danny mentioned, the student section is completely filled. This is very impressive, Danny. Good show out from Georgia Southern on the opposing side as well, occupying the upper level near Southern Pride. King and Kennedy split behind Shywartz. Two wides, tight left Cam Brown. Eagles moving left to right towards the scoreboard. First and 10 at their 13. Number one rushing defense of the conference owned by the Mountaineers. It's J.D. King picking his way inside. Bounces off the right hash. He has the 15-yard line. Two-yard pickup for second and eight. Akeem Davis Gaither, the top tackler from a year ago, makes his 52nd stop this season. Number one tackler again this year, Terry. They run a 3-4 defense, but like every team we face to say they run a 3-4, they walk everybody up on the line. That time they had five on the line and two backers, so basically seven in the box, and we run the standard called give right up the gut for the first play of the game. The wind and the rain whirling around the field, but it doesn't look like the droplets are making it towards field level. Kennedy in the wild eagle formation from that right hash, second and eight, 15 yard line. Kennedy started left, breaks back right, dragging a tackler with him up that right hash past the 20, give him the 21 yard line for a six yard pickup. Haven't seen a wild eagle snap this year. That might be something to neutralize that good rush defense. I keep thinking we may try something like that or with Caleb Hood and run the option out of it. Wouldn't mind seeing that. Big third down for the Eagles. Appalachia State not able to convert on third. We're at 28% on the year. And here we are at the ball of the 21. App's opponents are one of their last 24 on third downs. This is third, and we call this two. Eagles at their 21, no score at 1240 in the first quarter. It's J.D. King on the dive, breaks a tackle with the line of scrimmage. Taylor tried to pull him back. That is close. They have stopped the clock at 1233. It is mighty close as they put the football on the near hash at the 23. The drive began at the 13. So that should be a first down. It is. They have moved the chains. Wow, chance. they may review that. I thought that was very generous. Well, the student section thought that Taylor had the stop. He's been doing that all year. I did, too. But J.D. King, the way he's been running the last couple of weeks, no surprise at all that he earned that extra half yard. Remember, Georgia Southern just 28% on third downs coming in, 128th nationally. Ball about at center as the downs recycle. King and Kennedy split behind Wurtz. Two wides left, first and 10 from the 23. Georgia Southern's first drive after the app punt. Option coming to the right, Wurtz the pitch to Kennedy. Good block, King up the near side, numbers 30. 35, stutters to the 40, and decked out of bounds into the app bench with another Morris Bank first down, a gain of 21 for Wesley Kennedy, the third, picking up right where he left off last week. Yeah, well, how impressive was he last week? He opened up with a fumble, and then from there really got a chip on his shoulder and took off with it. 
App State came up quickly on the option. Shy had to release it probably a little sooner than he wanted to, but it was a very good pitch, and obviously it worked. Referees are halting the clock. This is an official timeout at 11.42 of the first half. They have not set the change yet on the far side, so that's the reason for the brief stoppage as Ransom comes out to the near side. And at the far side numbers, it's Darion Anderson. Remember D1 last year yep. in the second quarter, 57-yard touchdown reception. And what made that play really break for Kennedy was the great block by King. Great job coming up. The safety comes up, and he kicks him out of the way. Good job. Two new corners this year for the Mountaineers in Gene Charles and Jolly, but they are playing press coverage against Georgia Southern. For the Eagles, this is the fifth play of the drive. 11-38 and turning first quarter, scoreless at Kid Brewer Stadium. King and Kennedy in the split gun. Snap to works from the 43 after the gain of 20. It's J.D. King grinding his way off right tackle in between the hash and the numbers. He just does not want to go down easily. Up past the 45, and he's up to the, we'll call that the 47 for a gain of four. And great job by the Hogs up front. Jake Edwards in particular and Backer getting right behind J.D. King and pushing him along to get that extra yard. He was able to look like he got maybe four on that they're going to spot it at the 47 yard line we got to keep doing the dive i know app state's good at it but you got to make something break there it's going to open up the perimeter with the option caleb hood in slot left it's still a split gun this time laroche is in with king first appearance from speedy second down and six against the corner blitz Wartz has to get rid of this rolls out to the near side back near the 40 he could keep this Wartz close to midfield before stepping out of bounds have to check the official spot. It looked like Blackstock was closing in on him, along with Desmond Franklin, the all-conference safety. They do give Shy the 50-yard line. That's a three-yard pickup, setting up a third and three for the blue and white. Mark Mashad's got to pick up on that. The corner came in, creeped in on a corner blitz, went right after Shy. Shy was able to get rid of him, but it opened up Mashad, who's got to step back and wave his hands to the quarterback because he was would have been wide open. It was Gene Charles that came on the near side blitz, but Wurtz skirted him and picked up the yardage. Now they tighten up to the Mountaineers. They've got nine in the box. Double tight end shift to the left. Hancock sets up there. Brown on the right. Third and three from midfield. Off bounce. Snap. Wurtz has this. Hand off J.D. King. Blackstock hit him in the backfield. That's no gain. Attempting to bang his way over left guard, but the former walk-on, George Blackstock, did not let him wiggle free. And if you're Georgia Southern, I would think you play field position despite this drive. Going just a little bit more than three minutes. Goodness. I don't know if that's a called give or a read. If it's a read, he needed to keep it. But Be uh, Beck's going to come out and punt. He's going to have the wind at his back. Not able to convert on that. The eighth play of the drive. That was our second, third down of the series. Beck's going to be standing on his own 36-yard line. Hennigan at the 10 for App State. One of the top punt returners in the country. Three-man wedge in front of Beck. That's a gusty snap. Beck pulls it in. And this is a very high but not terribly deep kick. Hits at the great far side, punch. numbers at the 12. It actually takes a great roll for Georgia Southern inside the 10, and it ends up being spotted at the Appalachian State five-yard line. That's a 45-yard punt from Beck, using the wind to his advantage as it was blowing towards the scoreboard. Timeout on the field. Eagle football is brought to you by Zaxby's and your neighborhood Zaxby's restaurant. Indescribably good for over 20 years. Found first in Statesboro, now found worldwide. No score, 9.30 left in the first quarter from Boone. From Learfield, IMG College. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Georgia Southern Sports Network. Knox Pest Control has been servicing Eagle Nation in Alabama, Florida, and Georgia for generations. You can check them out online at knoxpestcontrol.com to find service near you. Knox knocks them out. Early field position battle at Penn Georgia Southern to the 13. Eagles ran it seven straight times before having to punt from midfield. Anthony Beck just pinned App at the Mountaineer 5. Mountaineer second possession with 9.30 left in the first quarter and no score in Boone. And hopefully this gives you an opportunity that maybe your defense can make something happen, right? Uh, you either get a pick six or a fumble or whatever. But again, I want to remind you, Zach Thomas, uh, pretty sturdy back there. Is that a good one? Uh, he, he doesn't get frazzled or rattled. You know, and really, the two passes, they, they dropped in the opening series. Hit them right in the hands, and they dropped them. Look for them to go back to that. Also, getting around the edge. They had success with that with the opening play. Trips left, right hash, first and 10 app, and it's five. Pistol back is Evans. The extra tight end is Pearson shifting into the backfield. Thomas hands off Evans straight ahead. Kendrick Duncan stands Ooh. him up and didn't let him pass. 
Looks to be a gain of close to four yards, but officially second and seven. It was Evans that gained 14 yards on the game's first play, but then App had a case of the drop season, forced them to punt. Yeah, he tattooed him right before, right as he got to close to the 10 yard line, right at the nine, and then drove him back. Good pickup, though. Ball still on the right hash in between the eight and the nine, so we're going to call this second down and seven. Evans the pistol back, same formation with trips to the left. Stretch play left. Eagles have to turn this in. Johnson set the edge. Evans breaks the tackle behind the line of scrimmage, but only gains one yard in between the hash of the numbers. Ty Phillips out of Colquitt County caught up to him. That's what Russ talked about, being able to set the edge and don't let that outside zone do just that. Another third down. This is third and five. And, and that's where App has had so much success early on in the season is getting so much yards on first and second down. The easy pick up third here, third and five, is a little bit more of a challenge. Again, look for that little hook route from the receiver. Turn around and show the quarterback back your numbers or great opportunity here for him to tuck it and run a 25 first quarter scoreless officially third and four they did give Evans the 11 Williams shuffles from the left slot off the right of the line of scrimmage the shotgun snap Thomas looking that way he can run decides to pull it he gets sacked back inside the 10 at the nine yard line it's Raymond Johnson the third with his first sack of his junior season that's a three and out for the Mountaineers he was able to get around Victor Johnson then and then right with right when John Thomas stepped up to run he let go of him and just bear just buried him that's exactly what we talked about Johnson's had an ink Injured ankle twice this year. Raymond had to try to take advantage, and he looped the edge and took down Zach Thomas. Sabach has to punt this from the second end in Mountaineers, five yards deep in his end zone. Kennedy actually in half territory. Sabach gets this away. Nice Kennedy punt. back pedals, calls for the fair catch. Uncertain on the hands, but does pull it in at midfield. That punt goes for 41, and Georgia Southern begins with the field already cut in half. The Eagles have been brought to you in 2019 by Case IH Tidewater. They're there to support you as you grow food, fiber, and fuel for the world. Appreciate them, too. Great sponsors all throughout the season. It's good getting to learn more and more about them. We'll come back in a moment. 7.36 left in the first quarter. We have no score in Boone, North Carolina from Learfield IMG College. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Georgia Southern Sports Network. Georgia Southern football in just a moment with 7.36 remaining in the first quarter. Eagles and App State tied at zero. Get officially licensed polos, T-shirts, hats, and more from the University Store. Go online to gsustore.com. Knox Pest Control sideline update with Russ Brown. Russ, Georgia Southern's defense is coming to play so far. Yeah, they're doing exactly what they need to do, Danny. You mentioned it. Set that edge, have the defense flow, make the tackle, doing a good job early on, slowing down that Appalachian State rushing attack. That is a key to this ball game. And look, I want to say this too, with this short field here, it's important to get points right now. The wind is with Georgia Southern. So that in, when you have the ball headed towards the scoreboard in this game, your offense has the advantage. The Eagles need to cash it in with points. Wind is blowing so hard that the goalposts off to our left are actually shaking. Fortunately, the ones that Georgia Southern are driving to are being blocked out by that monolith of a scoreboard. They put that in two years ago when Georgia Southern was last here. King and Kennedy split gun, three wide receivers as Dexter Carter is in for the first time on the right. At bails out late from the right hash, first and ten midfield. The lefty Peyton Backer snaps to Wirtz. It's Kennedy arcing left inside the leads block to the left hash. Kennedy 40-yard line throws a stiff arm, stays in bounds. Juke move 35 inside the 35. Another Morris Bank first down. WK3 runs for 16 yards on the first play of Georgia Southern's second possession. Counter play. Bounces off the tackle. Takes it to the sideline. Little Juke able to pick up five more yards. Good speed by Kennedy and good blocking as well. Reigning special teams player of the week after that 67-yard punt return touchdown against New Mexico State. But remember, he had six carries for 143 rushing, including the two long touchdowns. Playing so locked in. McKenzie, the tight end, three-man backfield. From the left hash at the App 34, first and 10. King breaking right. The hole was there, but App was able to close it somewhat quickly. King, though, not going down. Still wow. inside the 30, jarking all the way inside the right hash down to the 28 for five extremely difficult yards. I don't know how he did that. I was waiting for the whistle to be blown. And then he, his legs was still chugging right along. Good pickup. And again, puts us in a position. We've struggled on third down. And this is how you convert more third down. Great pickup on first. Eagles have been super on first and second downs the last three weeks. And it's no coincidence. Three consecutive wins to get to four and three. App, though, the first team in Sunbelt history, 7-0. Bobsled for the first time in two weeks. King, LaRoche, Kennedy in that order behind Wurtz. 
Second down and five for Georgia Southern at the 28. Wirtz option left, oh. couldn't pitch it. He had Kennedy, but Akeem Davis Gaither went low and tackles Wirtz for a loss of two to the 30 yard line. Had the option. He had the option. He saw it starting to separate and thought, well, I might be able to cut up. He had a lead blocker on the pitch. He's going to go back and look at the film on that one and say, that's one I need to pitch. Loss on the play is going to put the Eagles at the 30 for a third down. This will be the third, third down for the Eagles. Yep, third, third down for the Eagles so far in this ball game. We are within field goal range, Danny. 545 first quarter, no score. Eagles left to right, third down and seven from the 30. King the only back to the left of Wirtz. Tight end is McKenzie. Wirtz, two-step drop, four-man rush, throwing right at the hash, caught! Mark Bashad inside the 20, stretches out for the 15. It's a Morris Bank first down in between the numbers and the sideline. Mark Bashad, the senior, the New Yorker, he moves the chains for the blue and white. They're in the Case IH Tidewater red zone. Did that ball take forever to get there? It doesn't the matter. It was yeah. still caught. I was worried all the way across field, but a great pass, great catch, and great yards after the catch by Bashad. Good job. 15-yard reception for Mark Mashad, just his sixth catch all year. But remember, two of those were back-to-back -back touchdowns in overtime against Coastal. Eagles on the doorstep at the F-15 right hash. First and 10, no score, 5.41st quarter. Wurtz out of the gun, two backs. It's an option left. Davis sets the edge. Pitch to King. This has a chance. Kennedy the block. King inside the 10, driving for the sidelines. And he's hit hard out of bounds into the Georgia Southern bench. It was Davis Gaither again. He was the guy that Georgia Southern was optioning off of and still had enough athleticism to make the tackle. Six-yard run, though, for J.D. King. Oh, there's a lot of great athletes on that app defense, no doubt about it, and good blocking downfield by Dexter Carter, Jr., so that King could pick up some more yards. Getting inside the 10-yard line now, second and, what, five, I guess. Freshman tight end Chase Hancock has checked in. He lines up off right tackle Caleb King. Only one wide receiver is Mashad inside the right numbers. Officially second down and six. Eagles at the app 10. High snap. It's King. Over left tackle. Keeps his feet but gets pushed backwards. And it's no gain. Backer ended up getting launched back by the blitzing safety Franklin. E.J. Scott, the defensive tackle, former walk-on, ultimately makes the play and forces a third down and seven for the blue and white. Yeah, a little loss on the play. The second loss on the day for the Eagles. Ball will be situated on the left hash as the Mountaineers change up personnel up front with Blackstock coming back in. Jared leads. Seventh play of the drive coming up. Leads is back in at left tackle. Three wides, Murray slot right. Play clock to nine. Third and seven at the ten. Works looking. Fade route left corner of the end zone. And a flag comes in. The ball was deflected by Franklin, but Mashad was getting wrapped up yeah. in the grass by Shamar Jean Charles. If that's on App State, that should be Georgia Southern possession at the two because it occurred in the end zone. Yeah, there was a lot of contact. A lot of contact down the sideline. Head official is Wayne Winkler. We'll get the call momentarily. Big penalty for the Eagles. Pass interference. Defense. Off the end zone, off the place of the two yard line, first down. You are literally on the threshold of taking the lead here in Boone. Eagles haven't led in Boone since the first quarter of 2015. Wow. At the two, left hash, first and goal. So Georgia Southern has converted twice on third down, another time on an at penalty. It was Gene Charles that had the interference. Kennedy off to the left of Wirtz, double tight end formation. App with eight in the box. Kennedy shifts right. Wirtz, hands to Kennedy, push backwards, back of the five, back forward, stretches for the goal line. He's got six! Wings up, Eagle Nation! Touchdown, Georgia Southern! Caleb Sperlin had him, but couldn't hold him. And Wesley Kennedy, the third, has his sixth rushing touchdown in less than four games played this year. That's a 6 nothing Eagle lead at 4.03 in the first quarter. Need to get with Brian Johnson to see a stat on Kennedy. How many yards does he get after initial contact? He bounces off those kits, take him, and he just keeps going. Told you, Kennedy, talked to him on Tuesday and inside Georgia Southern football. He is playing like a guy possessed trying to catch up, and he is. Missed the first four games of the season. Eagles are aligned in the model huddle, looking for the alignment to see if they can go for two. But they re-break and shuttle back towards the football. Lagging to put his hands on this. Beck to hold for Tyler Bass. Georgia Southern had it at midfield after the fair catch by Kennedy. A couple of third down conversions, one on a pass interference in the end zone, and that's how he gets six. Bass's extra point, true blue. 
403 remaining in quarter number one in Boone, Georgia Southern on top of the undefeated Appalachian State Mountaineers. Seven to nothing as this timeout is brought to you by Optum Healthcare. Taking time to recover in a group like the Eagles are currently can make all the difference in your health. Seven nothing for the blue and white. Almost 11 minutes in from Kid Brewer Stadium. This is Eagle Football from Learfield IMG College. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Georgia Kennedy Southern Kennedy from two Sports yards out. As the Eagles lead in Boone for the first time in four years. App has had two possessions. 14-yard play on the first snap. Next three plays, they punted. App then went three and out after it was backed up at its own five-yard line. Credit Anthony Beck with a fine punt. Thomas out of the pistol. Evans behind him. As Pearson, the tight end shifting left. First and 10, 25-yard line outside zone. And that's another tackle for loss. How about that read from Reynard Ellis? The Furman transfer. Minus five for second down and 15. Wow. Set the edge and be the fighter. That's what Georgia Southern's defense has done so far. They saw the read. He gambled. Looked for a play action to come out of this or a counter. Great play. Great play. Evans split to the near side as App has emptied the backfield with five wide receivers. Three and a half to play first quarter. Georgia Southern a 7-0 advantage. Three down linemen. And Quinn Williams is showing a blitz off the right edge. Thomas over the middle. Just about picked off, but Williams caught it up to the 30-yard line. Decked hard. It was Rashad Bird that sideswiped him. Evans, or I'm sorry, Williams up to the, call that the 32 for a 12-yard reception. And Eagle is down, so App will not be able to get into its tempo. That's Raymond Johnson, the third, who was slow to his feet. That was about a pick six. Yeah, it was. That You're close about to a pick six. He did. He jumped the route. But thankfully, he had some backside help because that could have gone the distance. So Johnson has to go out. Dylan Springer, who had a sack last week, one of his three this season. Ironic. He and Trevor Vleem, the book ends on front. They were high school teammates in Midland in Texas. 0 for 2 on third down tonight is App State. After the gain of 12, this is third and three at the... 22, Thomas looked left, he decides to run, Brinson hit him, oh, what a shot from Rashad Bird. Pretty much helicoptering him around, very similar to the play that knocked Thomas out of the game in Statesboro last year, but he was able to get under the pads and has the first down just past the 35-yard line. Great play call, great execution, got just enough in order to get the first down. Ty Phillips goes off, Gavin Adcock goes in at defensive tackle. Hopefully there's no helmet contact there. Didn't look like it, just a hard pop. It was a lot of shoulder from Bird, and he's got big ones. 2.30 first quarter, Georgia Southern up 7-0 on the two-yard touchdown run by Kennedy. Pistol for Evans. Inside zone, Bird turns it back in. Nobody there. 40-yard line, 41. Duncan got him from behind, attempts to throw him backwards, hit him late. App students want a personal foul. A little bit of pistol cuts back on the far side, hash near the 35-yard line, but that was in the process of the play, so certainly not illegal by any means. Ends up a gain of six yards for Darrington Evans as we go under two minutes on the next snap in this first quarter. Great blocking on the end there. Great pop coming up. A lot of emotions. App State players should take up for their guy. I have no problem with that. Fifth play of the drive for the Mountaineers. Actually gave Evans the 42-yard line for a pickup of seven. So far, six touches, 22 yards. They're going to let a player, he's going to have to come out of the game. I think there's some blood on his leg. And I believe that is Evans yeah, coming it's Evans. out of the game. So, so that's going to bring in who? Marcus uh, Williams? Williams has to come in, junior out of Rocky Mount. Remember, two years ago here, he replaced an injured Jalen Moore. 28 carries, 130 yards, best game of his career. Hennigan on the motion. It's a fake of the fly sweep inside give for Williams. Eagles give resistance. He does not have the first down, does Williams. Stopped. At the 44-yard line, this is third down and a yard with 120 left in the opening quarter. And the Eagles leading 7-0 here in the mountain. I would say two down territory if they don't pick it up. App State's offensively trying to get something going. Williams stays in as Evans remains on the sideline. He was forced to leave the game by the officiating crew. Twins left, extra tight end left is Pearson along with Colin Reed. 
Third and a yard, right hash. App at its 44. Hennigan motions into the backfield. Dive for Williams. Rashad Bird stopped him. He stopped him. No gain. I would say maybe even a loss. And Bird points to the sidelines. He knows he just made a landmark play as App is shut down again on third and short. And Sabach has to come back to punt. I'm a little surprised by the call here. I would think they would go for it. I know they're on their side. It's early in the ball game. But again, got to get their offense going. Kennedy coming running out there quickly, or is that King? Liptrot is back to Lip return the punt. You can't see from the side there. Sabach has already punted twice. One was pinned the Eagles back at the 13. Eagles come after this. Sabach, the lefty from Australia, gets it away. Fair catch, gets away late, takes an eagle bounce laterally and now back up field past the 25. And App does not down this until it reaches the 28-yard line. I I'm a just confused by that. The clock was ticking down, Danny, and you could turn the field and punt it with the wind at your back but you choose to punt into the win. Punnelly goes for 28 for Sabach, and that's that's not good for a guy that averages 43 yards a kick, and considering that we're this high up, didn't benefit from it. I know the win is slightly in his face, no, but that was a very un punt. <laughs> Seven plays, and App State not able to get anything done. 15 seconds left until the second quarter. Could be the last play with the Eagles up 7-0. Split gun, King, and LaRoche from the 28 first and 10. Fake to King. Option right. There's the pitch to LaRoche. Around the numbers, 35. And he's pulled down before that could have gone for a lot more. Give LaRoche the 36. It was Akeem Davis Gaither from Thomasville, North Carolina, that got him around the hips. Otherwise, Speedy might have shown even more of that. Gaith Eagles will have a second and short when the second quarter begins, and we'll do that after this timeout. BB&T is rooted in the Eagle Nation community with two locations in Statesboro. For more than 140 years, BB&T has been sharing financial knowledge with their clients, their neighbors, and their friends. BB&T, member FDIC. After one, the Eagles outgaining app 88 to 38, and they lead the Mountaineers 7-0 in Boone. This is Eagle football from Learfield IMG College. One quarter completed Kid Brewer Stadium, and I would say that went pretty well for the Blue and White, despite five consecutive losses up here dating back to 2007. Georgia Southern the only score in a two-yard touchdown run by Wesley Kennedy, capping a seven-play scoring drive from midfield. And as we start the second, the Eagles lead Appalachian State 7-0. Yeah, Danny, you talked about that scoring drive. We got the ball in great field position. It was right at midfield, the 50-yard line. We ate up three minutes and 33 seconds of the clock. It took seven plays. Kennedy was spectacular in that series. J.D. King had a huge run in that, but a great pass on third down to Mashad. Yep. I think it was 16 yards yep. cross field, and then the yards after the catch really put the Eagles in position for Kennedy to punch it in. The Eagles take the 7 to nothing lead, and that is your Ford scoring drive. Ford F-150 works hard and never backs down because when you are built Ford tough, the drive to win is everything you do. That's the F-150. Danny, they are the official truck of the Georgia Southern Eagles. Georgia Southern to have the football at its 36, second down and two. Average better than five yards a carry in that first quarter. Of course, paced by Kennedy. Four carries, 45 yards, and that touchdown. Let's go down to Russ Brown real quickly. Russ, we can still see the rain around the field, but it doesn't look like it's actually reached the turf since all about midway through pregame. Well, yeah, it's getting down here, but it's just kind of spitting, and it's sideways, and it's very light. It's almost more of a mist, really, uh, than a rain. So it's not really affecting field conditions i don't imagine the ball's getting very wet i mean i feel it hitting my face right now but it's not like wet if that makes any sense so rain not really a factor obviously the wind is now the eagles are going to go into the wind good news we don't throw the ball that much so it's okay but when app state gets the ball back let's see if they try to open up this offense with the wind at their back the temperature has dropped nearly 30 degrees since we got here it says 40 but it actually feels like 28 with the wind chill and we're in the second quarter LaRoche King split gun, Cam Brown tight left, McKenzie on the line of scrimmage next to Caleb Kelly. Played the last four weeks and has really done well in this redshirt sophomore season. Eagles now go right to left from their 36 second down and two. Back of the snap, Wurtz jumps to get it. Here's King down through the middle. Another tackle for Akeem Davis. Gaither his seventh, but an easy first down for Georgia Southern. A Morris Bank first down. King about went gumby leg to try to gain some more yards and stretch out his frame he's up past the 40 near the 41 because the mountaineers literally had nine in the box nine in the box if he could have broke that second level it had been off to the races for jd king first down and 10 ball in the 41 the eagles up by seven it's funny what happens when georgia southern has three walk-on offensive linemen and they are moving a line of scrimmage against the best defense in the league and the offensive line the history of georgia southern was based on walk-ons laroche offset left 
Murray motions behind. LaRoche running right. He has room across the 45-yard line, 50-yard line, close to a Morris Bank first down. That spot should give it to him. Out of bounds at the App State 48. A run of 11 for Matt LaRoche. Shamar Jean Charles, who had that costly interference penalty on the Georgia Southern touchdown drive, he guided him into the Eagle bench. Just got the first quarter stats. Eagles had 88 yards in the first quarter. The Appalachian Mount State Mountaineers just 38. Georgia Southern has run 17 plays so far. 16 runs. That sounds like Eagle football. In plus territory, LaRoche Kennedy back in. Split gun, two wides. First to 10 at the app, 48. Works coming the option near side. He needs to pitch and does so. Kennedy has the corner. 45 stays in bounds, 40 and out of bounds. We'll have to see where the spot is. The official, the head linesman, puts his right foot at the 38. That is right at the stick, which could be another 10. It is another Morris Bank force down. Georgia Southern's eighth first down already. Mountaineers only have two. Five plays, four first downs. Five carries, 55 yards. So if you go back to last week, Kennedy's last 11 carries, he has 198 yards rushing. Here's the bobsled. LaRoche, King, Kennedy in that order. Wurtz awaits the snap from Backer. On this, the fifth play of the drive. The app 38 first and 10. Wurtz fakes the King option right with two lead blockers. A pitch to Kennedy. LaRoche throws the lead block. Kennedy past the 35-yard line in between the hash and the numbers. And rip to the ground at about the 32. Give him six more. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's gaining much. And before you realize it, they have six yards. Getting closer and closer into App's area here. They're going to spot it to 32. We're going to bring in a pair of tight ends. App is not used to getting outnumbered to the wide side like that, but Georgia Southern using those heavy backfields with multiple running backs. App just can't set that edge like the Eagles have done against App's zone stretch play. Plenty of time on the play clock. Right hash, second and four. App 32, Eagles up 7-0. Almost two and a half minutes into the second quarter. Works the snap. Gives it to King very late, attempting to push through the right tackle. Ends up getting pulled backwards by Spurl in no game. Ended up getting pulled down to the turf at the numbers. And King tried to bow that one out. That was designed to go more up the middle. Yeah. But still, for Georgia Southern, a third and four upcoming. There was nowhere for him to cut up. So he was trying to bounce it out. And the App State defensive momentum just kept pushing him to the sideline. Big third down for the Eagles. You think we're in field goal range, but when you factor in the win, we really aren't. Going the other direction. So if that's the case, Bass would have to kick into the stiff one. We are two or three on third down tonight. App came in one of its last 24, holding people without third downs. Press coverage with twins to the left. Third and four at the app, 32. Mountaineers again with nine in the box. Wirtz has the snap. Plenty of time throwing out to the left. Almost intercepted. That should have been Shai's first NT thrown in two years. It was Josh Thomas that about had a 70-yard run back. But now we'll see if Bass has the leg. This is to be about a 50-yarder into the win. Now I think I would end up uh, you either go for it or you punt it here. But he's going to try to kick a field goal into the wind. Maybe the wind will do us some favors. Josh Thomas has six interceptions on the year, on his career, but none this year. Great break on the ball. It did exactly what he was supposed to. We're very fortunate that wasn't a pick six. This will be a season-long 49-yarder for Bass. Keep in mind, App has blocked five kicks this year, number one in the country. Snap good, hold good, low line drive kick. Bass is oh good! Oh, my. And it was good by a lot. A low line drive kick, which was probably the only way he's going to make it, and he did it. You call that win. Georgia Southern is the storm. 10-0 Eagles lead in the second quarter. We have a timeout on the field. Queensboro National Bank and Trust has locations all across Georgia. Stop in, and you'll see how personal and uncomplicated our service is. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. This is Georgia Southern football from Learfield IMG College. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Georgia Southern Sports Network. Time now for the Ford Scoring Drive. Ford F-150 works hard, never backs down, because when you are built Ford tough, Eagle tough, the drive to win is in everything you do. That's the F-150, the official truck of the Georgia Southern Eagles. Eight plays, 40 yards, three minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. A huge, huge field goal by Tyler Bass. Into the win. The wind died down just a little, and he hit a, I don't know, I'd call that a one-iron. One-iron <laughs> through the sticks. And those three points could be huge. Great clutch kick by Tyler Bass as he gets ready to kick off. Here in the second quarter, the Eagles up 10 to nothing with 11.45 to go until half. Remember, we saw earlier that Bass had to bring in Jesse Liptrot to hold 
It's still been two touchbacks, but this is the first time that Bass has kicked into that wind, even though it may have died down a little bit when Bass banged it through from 49. The wind blowing such to the effect that Darrington Evans is actually waiting at his right hash at the 10. He's dangerous, better than 30 yards of return this year, sixth nationally. Ransom to hold the kickoff. Bass kicks it away from him. Hennigan calls for the fair catch, and he has it at the 10. Hennigan was on the back pedal, a smart play by the junior wide receiver. The Mountaineers begin at the 25. Yeah, I was about to say, because into the wind like that, the ball hung up a lot, and we were going to be in pretty good coverage. Georgia Southern outgaining App State 120 to 38. Average yards per play, Georgia Southern 5.7, App 2.9. They just brought in Henry Pearson, their tight end, the backup tight end, who's really taken over. Georgia Southern has got to continue to set that edge. Evans back in. He left last drive with an apparent cut, but he's okay. So far, six carries, 22 yards for the number three rusher in the conference at better than 700 yards this season. Out of the pistol, play fake, rolling right from the 25. Thomas, first and 10. Thomas looking right, deflected incomplete. Randy Wade Jr., second time in three weeks. He's gotten a wing on a football. It's second and 10. You talk about in hot pursuit, too. Backside linebacker Baldry comes in on a blitz. They got two at Mountaineers trying to chase him away before he was able to get to Thomas, who was running away from him. Do you notice what Wade did? It's almost like he didn't go after him. He said, come on, big boy, throw that football, because if you do, I'm knocking it down, which is exactly what he did. Well, he also had to stay in case he tucked and ran. App in the Wildcat, Evans to take the snap. Second and 10, 25, fake the fly sweep to Virgil. It's Evans, judders, goes back to the left, to the left hash, but the Eagles stonewall him after a gain of two, short of the 28-yard line. Randy Wade again out of Early County. App trying to take a page out of that Eagle book, but again, Georgia Southern is being hard on that edge and not letting anything get to the sideline. It looked like something was going to happen, and then it just didn't develop. A whole host of white jerseys come in for the Eagles. I see Acton in particular coming in. Also, it looks like Springer's coming in at the end position. This is third down, officially eight. App at its 27, down 10 nothing in the Mountaineers, 11 minutes left first half. Keyshawn Watts of the Western Michigan transfer. Motions to the left, four wides. Thomas looks to throw. Eagles blitz. Ecton can't get there. Thomas looks back right, throws the slot. That is caught past the 35 in between the hashes up to the 40. It is a first down for the Mountaineers. Just their second third down conversion of the game. Malik Williams makes his 30th catch. Raynard Ellis was right in behind him, but just couldn't knock the ball down. And Rutledge coming in from the safety position, just showing up a little bit too late. Not able to bat it away, but make the tackle. Shotgun four wides. Thomas a lead, oh and that my. got blown up. Evans had the handoff and about got taken down by two guys at the same time. That's the big one. Hail Caesar. C.J. Wright minus four back to the 30 or 36 yard line. That is the third tackle for a loss on the night for the Eagles. He was there with the handoff. He about took the handoff. I, I thought he was going to pick up Evans and just carry him into the end zone. He could. Raquan Anderson checks in at tailback. He had 99 yards in garbage time against South Isle a week ago. That was a 30-3 win in Mobile. Five minutes into the second quarter, Georgia Southern up 10-0 in Boone. Four wide, second down and 14 at the 36. Gun pitch left. Anderson to the edge. Got two blocks. Bird catches up 40-yard line. Flag on the play. This should be coming back. That looks to be a hold on Appalachian State. That is the... Second flag we've had. The first was the pass interference that set the Eagles up for the touchdown. I got to think that's a hold on the Mountaineers. Either that or it's going to be a chop, chop block. Take the chop, too. That'd be 15 instead of 10. Just a quick toss sweep over there. They're talking to Lunsford to see if he wants the penalty. Holding. He does. Oh, oh. Offense number 60. 10 yard penalty. Replay second down. Got the all conference center, Noah Hannon, for the hold. Second penalty on the night for Appalachian State. That moves the football back to the Mountaineer 32. The students are not happy with what they've seen so far, but remember, Apps won 13 straight games. They haven't lost since the Eagles beat them 34-13 in Statesboro last October the 25th. So it goes from second to 14 to second and 18. Evans back in as the pistol back. Tight left to Pearson along with Reed. Hennigan motions, fake the fly sweep to him, rolling right. Thomas clutches, looking. Eagles have it covered. Thomas looking deep, middle incomplete. He had his eyes going to the sideline. It was back towards the middle. Bird was in coverage as the pass was intended for the tight end, Colin Reed. No relation to Colin or I. Third down and 18 for App with 9.28 left in the first half. And once again, the blitz by Baldry getting on top of him. I was a little surprised that Thomas tried to throw across his body like that to the tight end. I thought he was going to throw it away. 
that's one of those mistakes that we need to have go our way for an INT. Thomas just two of six, 24 yards coming in, was number one of the conference in completion percentage. Two of four on third down tonight. This is third and 18 at back, and it's 32. They need midfield. Eagles up 10 nothing. Screen set up. Thomas looks right. Hennigan the catch back inside the 30. In between the hashes, Eagles don't let Hennigan get away. He is wrangled and dropped at the 33-yard line by Donald Rutledge Jr. We're going to see Xavier Savage one more time for his third punt of the evening. Check that, Danny. I said two of four. They were two of five come on third down coming into that. Now two of six. There you go. And Steve. they are coming into the game at 51 percent. So we're sixth really, in the country. Yeah, it's, we're doing an amazing job uh, defensively right now. Our right, Kennedy's back in to return this punt at from its 33. I'd back up more. And he's punting with the wind is Sabach. So this one, this one could go. Eagles break four, Sabach the lefty, line drive, Kennedy backpedals, close to his own 20, pulls it into the 21 right hash, he has the edge, breaks a tackle, Kennedy 25, ran one back last week, 30, stays in bounds, back to the numbers, back outside, 35 yard line, tripped and dropped at the 36 yard line, so a 15 yard run back as Mike Price, the reserve cornerback, made the tackle for the Mountaineers, but Georgia Southern once again gets off of the field, their offense returns when we come back with 838 in the second quarter, come to the clubhouse in Statesboro with go-karts, mini golf, bowling, laser Tag, spin zone batting cages and a state-of-the-art arcade the clubhouse where fun is done it's georgia southern 10 appalachian state zero this is eagle football from learfield img college from learfield img college this is the georgia southern sports network Eagle football when the timeout concludes. 8.38 left first half. It's Georgia Southern 10, Appalachian State nothing. Thankfully, the rain has stopped in Boone, but it is mighty, mighty cold here in the shadow of Howard's Knob. Let's pause 10 for station identification from Learfield IMG College. Devon Kine is back in our Statesboro studios with Russ Brown and Frank Solkowski at field level and in the booth here at Kid Brewer Stadium with Colin Lacey and my broadcast partner Terry Harvin. My name is Danny Reed. It's real simple. Georgia Southern last two drives, touchdown, field goal. App has had the ball four times, four punts. Eight minutes and 38 seconds until half. The Eagles are up by 10. Love to see us drive down, eat up as much of that clock as possible, put a touchdown on the board so that we'll have a three-score separation. This is a very, very good Appalachian State football team. They will come back. If we can do that, we get the ball first coming into the third quarter. Ranked 20th in the country for good reason. One of nine undefeated teams coming in. Third amongst G5 teams. They've got eyes at a possible Cotton Bowl bid. But Georgia Southern trying to take care of its own business. Win for the first time here in 12 years. Again, they're going to put five on the line of scrimmage with two backers. LaRoche Kennedy split behind Wurtz in the shotgun. Two wide receivers. Eagles at their 6 yard line, first and 10. Wurtz unable to pitch. He gets bottled up and dropped. Jackson, the ball came out at the end. Yeah, they're going to call a fumble. No, I think they've said forward progress stopped. The ball was ripped out at the end, but forward progress was deemed to have been stopped at the 34-yard line. It's a two-yard loss, but thankfully, it's not Georgia Southern turning the football over. It was Taylor that ripped it out. The challenge that I had there, Danny, was I didn't see the white hat get his arms up yeah. with a whistle, and that's why I was sitting here thinking, oh my gosh. And because it was blown dead, that is not reviewable. Because forward progress was stopped, that's not reviewable. Well, the outside linebacker came up and just blew that play up. One of the few times that App State has been able to get some solid penetration. Third tackle for a loss, Danny. Second and 12, Eagles back at their 34 in between the hashes with King and Kennedy in the gun. Kennedy splits wide right after motioning. It's a draw play. Works, picks his way through the middle, 35-yard line, grinding and charging his way up to the 40. So he got the two yards back, plus four more. It is third down and six for the blue and white, needing the 46-yard line with 7.35 remaining in the first half. The lead is 10-0 as Georgia Southern is outgaining App by more than 2-1 to one so far. You go back and look at the previous drives, we had a lot of yards on first and second down, which helped us in that third down, and a lot of times we weren't even getting to third down. Here we are third down and long. We are 2 of 4 on the night, just 25, 28% on the year. Officially from the 39. This is third and seven for the Eagles with King and Kennedy joining Wirtz. Two wides left. That's Murray in the slot. Gaither showing blitz. Pitch near side, Kennedy. Speeding to the numbers, 40, but had a hit at the 39, no gain. Kennedy had the edge, but he just couldn't turn his shoulders and square it upfield. Georgia Southern's going to have to punt after no gain. Well, the challenge there is also 
we weren't able to get to that outside linebacker with the block. He was already shooting up the gap by the time King got there, was already past King, and he blew up the play. They got great penetration on Shy Wirt, so he had to release the ball quickly. And now Beck's coming out for his second punt on the night. And he's going to be punting into the wind, standing on his own 25-yard line. First three and out of the evening for Georgia Southern as Hennigan has his toe tips back at his own 25. Eagles shift into their punt formation. Remember, Mountaineers have blocked five kicks this year, best of the country. They don't rush. Beck puts nice. the foot to it. Good punt despite the win. Hennigan, late fair catch signal, but he pulls it in right side hash at the 17. 43-yard punt for Beck, and they time out on the field here at Kid Brewer Stadium. Still 10-0 Georgia Southern at ball with 6 minutes, 29 seconds remaining first half. Here at Georgia Southern, we go all out. The same is true with the Ford F-150. That's the official truck of the Georgia Southern Eagles. This is Eagle football from Learfield IMG College. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Georgia Southern Sports Network. Thus far in this rivalry matchup from Kid Brewer Stadium, Georgia Southern, the road team, has been the aggressor. They lead number 20, App State, 10-0. 629 left in the first half. Anthony Beck just punted 42 yards officially. App begins at its 18. Eagles have won the battle of field position, but they have won the battle of just about every stat category so far. They really have. 629 to go until half with the Eagles up 10 to nothing. Zach Thomas not on his game, but his receivers aren't really helping him either. He's 3 of 7 passing for just 25 yards. Again, look for that tight end. Look for that crossing route. They had some success with it. We're stopping their run right now because they only have 25 25 yards of rushing tonight. That's on 12 carries as well. Evans the pistol back, two wides, two tights. Eagle show blitz on first and 10 from the 18th. Flea flicker. Evans gives back to Thomas. He wants deep middle. Sutton has a snap. This is. Oh, was that picked off? Almost. Almost. Oh, my. Donald Rutledge put his back on the ground. He sacrificed his body to keep Sutton from going all the way. That's incomplete for second down. That's what you've got to do in somebody else's house. You were saying don't give up the big play. You look like we were giving it up. But Rutledge was timing it perfectly, and he made the jump at the last minute. Thought he was going to come down with the ball. And the receiver, you got to give the receiver credit. I think the receiver did a good job of stripping it out when he fell. I think the wind being at his back helped that ball hang up enough for Rutledge to get back there. Bunch trip left. Williams, the running back, hits the stretch play right past the 20-yard line. Oh, hit hard out of bounds. Reynard Ellis threw the boulder of his shoulder. App wants another personal foul, but they've been complaining much of the evening. It's short of a first down by two yards at the 26, third and two for App, 6-15 second quarter, 10-0 Eagles. If they were going to throw a flag on the sideline there, we did hit him while he was still in bounds, but Cooper Hodges, the right tackle, is lucky he got away with one because that was the big hit coming in at the end. Touchdown run for Wesley Kennedy, 49-yard field goal for Tyler Bass. App has only had 58 total yards of offense. Williams the pistol back, third and two for the Mountaineers at their 26. Straight dive, Williams, no shot! Stopped at the line of scrimmage again! Randy Wade Jr., he's having an all-conference kind of season. That's going to be App's fifth consecutive punt. The Georgia Southern defense is fighting when it has to. You talk about popping somebody. He came in right at the line of scrimmage, and now App State is two of seven on third down. We talked about him early. Rain, it looks like snow flurries almost coming in, but it still looks like a, it's still not coming to the field. Sabach's leg is getting a workout. He's his own Venn diagram. Back to him inside his own 20. Nice punt. Fair catch for Lip Trot. Backpedals outside the near side hash and secures it at his own 34. Again, the Eagles have an opportunity here now with a little over five minutes on the clock until halftime to get those seven points, to get that three-score separation going into the second half. Punt goes for 40. GSU fans right now signed up for Northland's high-speed, reliable Internet services, 100-meg Internet for only $49.99 a month. That's the same price as the 50-meg, but double the speed. Visit GetNorthland.com to find out more. Could have keep it right here as we have a chance to do a lot of good in Boone, North Carolina. Chance to beat App State here for the first time since 2007. End App State's 13-game winning streak. Probably knock them out of the top 25 and certainly ruin their aspirations at being the Sun Belt representative in the G5 Access Bowl, which this year is the Cotton Bowl. When you're thinking about something like that, it's going to overtake your mind eventually. Keep this in mind as well. In nine days, 
App's got a Power 5 matchup in Columbia against South Carolina. So maybe, just maybe, they're thinking about that slightly despite losing to Georgia Southern in States Pro last year. Yeah, yeah you Just might, slightly. You, you, maybe slightly because they want to knock off another one, but at the end of the day, there's not a lot of love between these two programs. And again, you toss out the records when these schools play each other. It is what it is. App State is a very good team. So you know with second half, they're going to make the adjustments and put a push. That's why that next touchdown that we get is just huge. We've got to get it. We've got to get some more points. I look for Georgia Southern to reestablish the dive with 5-16 left in the first half. That last time, the Eagles tried the pitch twice. They didn't get it with the fluidity that they did the first couple of possessions. Their first three and out of the evening. But like we just talked about, the defense has been fantastic. Remember, coming in, three straight games, 270 total or less. First time in nine years that that has happened. So far for App tonight, they have run 22 plays, 58 yards for two and a half yards average five punts two three and outs they are biting on that option and coming up very very hard they're hitting shy forcing him to pitch it sooner than he wants to and they're in position to make a tackle on the pitch we've seen that the last series i wouldn't mind seeing a counter option here which would work or a playoffs play action off the option kelly in at right tackle for wilson two wides one each way with anderson at the left numbers colby ransom at the right numbers you've got the diamond formation joining Wurtz. King, LaRoche, Kennedy. Can't be too many other people because nobody else is healthy. Going to rush four. They're going to keep three backers back, but they still got seven in the box. Gene Charles bails out late from the left corner. First and ten. Eagles at their 34. Wurtz unable to pitch. App is starting to turn him in, but Wurtz wises up, hangs on to the football, splits the hashes, and he grinds those legs up to the 37-yard line. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it's not a tackle for loss like last drive began. Uh, you, you mentioned the word grind. And you mentioned the grind. That's exactly what Georgia Southern would probably love to do is grind this up and eat up all the clock as no flurries starting to come down here in Boone, North Carolina. It's snowing. Elijah Dirasuba made the tackle for App. Trips left, middle of the field. 440 first half, Eagles up 10 0. Wurtz awaiting the gun snap on the second down and seven play. It's King on the inside. Broke Cobb's tackle behind the line of scrimmage. King running hard into Jordan Fair. 40-yard line, 41-yard line before the whistle blows. You can't blame the officials for not stopping play because J.D. King is not stopping. It is third down and three for the blue and white with 420 left in this first half. The lead is 10-0. The defense for Georgia Southern has been the key, but the offense has to find a way to stay on the turf. The Eagles 2 of 5, not able to convert the last two series on third down tight ends coming into the ball game big big third down here going into half four minutes and counting on the clock split backs two wides press coverage from the mountaineers eagles need three yards from their own 41 on third down Wurtz puts it in King's belly. He's got a first down. Wow. App trying to rip the ball out. Unsuccessful in doing so. King to the 45 in between the hashes. Shy of the block A. That is a Morris Bank first down. Again, grinding it out. Three minutes, 45 to go to half. Bass already made a long one into the win. We'd rather have a touchdown here. Eagles can afford to be patient. They have all three of their timeouts. We know they're going to be patient. They do this thing called a huddle that not very many teams do anymore. Shy of the block A from the 45 Eagles in their own territory, first and 10, two backs, two wides. Just over 320 first half. Works to throw, only completed one pass. He's taking a deep shot right sideline. And there is Colby Ransom who got tugged from come behind. On. I didn't see a penalty flag no, come out. They wanted one. A hat came off. That's what we saw as Ransom was forced out of bounds as E.J. Scott provided the pressure on Wurtz. The ball was already in the air, and that's what Coach Lunsford is arguing for, but it's probably not catchable in their mind. You're right. But again, the ball's in the air, and you're being pushed out of bounds as the snow is really starting to come down here. And Boone. Yeah, it was Sean Jolly that was matched up with Ransom as Georgia Southern wanted to go for the downs. And look at the snow! Kids, Jolly, by the way, out of Stevenson High School. 38 degrees, so it's not going to give us a chance to build snowmen. Murray motions, Kennedy in the backfield. Kennedy skips through past the 50-yard line. Left hash in that territory after a gain of nine down to the 46 with three minutes and six seconds to play in the first 30. Georgia Southern, another opportunity with third down and short as Kennedy has eight carries for 71 yards on a touchdown this half. They're going to say third and about a yard and a half as we bring in another tight end. Chase Hancock coming into the ball game out of McClinney, Georgia. 
Now that's Florida, actually. Baker County High School, if I'm not mistaken. Eagles three of six on third downs. They need a yard and a half. Left hash up 10, nothing under three to play first half. King on the dive. Oh, no. My. Demetrius Taylor. Oh, he lost. Did yeah, he, he lost. It? Nope. He didn't lose much. Maybe a half a yard, but the Eagles are still two yards short of the first. Now going to be spotted at the apt 47-yard line. Taylor just moved people out of the way, and J.D. King couldn't plow past him. All right. I, I, I keep going by the old school here, almost to the point that you let the clock go down all the way, call a timeout, make them think you're going to go for it, right? And I, then send your punter out there and then see if they can get him to jump off sides. I think about letting the clock run here. Most definitely let it run, but see if you can get him to jump a little bit here. Maybe we can pick up a cheap first down. Punt from the plus 47. Beck pinned up at the five earlier. Snap came know? back with five. Beck into the wind. It hangs up a little bit. Hennigan says get away. Hits far side. Hash of the 12. Hennigan fields it and then goes down so the Eagles can't pin them deeper. But still for Beck, second time he's pinned up inside the 10. Mountaineers begin at the 8 with 148 to play first half. And Georgia Southern holding on to a 10 to nothing lead. Nice tackle with a log snapper, Ryan Langan. Out of Cedar Rapids, Nebraska. He's a good one. He is a really good snapper. The last two drives for Georgia Southern, not able to do anything with it, having to punt. Now we have App State pinned back on the eight-yard line. Good chance for the defense here, but you got to be careful. You saw them try to go long. They want to get a quick score before going into the halftime. Left hash, that's the far side of the field. Evans the pistol back with two wide receivers tightly off each side of the line of scrimmage from the eight first and ten. Thomas the knee high snap gives Evans through the middle. Past the 15-yard line, Evans runs it to Kendrick Duncan to the numbers 20-yard line. Wow. Plows ahead, and he's up to the 24 for a gain of 16, his longest run of the night, up to 37 yards total. App has three timeouts. They're going to get right back on the football as Sutton through the lead block. They only had 25 yards coming in, or 33 yards rushing coming into that. He picks up 16 on one carry. Evan stays in, pistol back, left hash from the 24 for the Mountaineers, first and 10. Under 90 seconds left first half. Play fake Thomas looking left, throw quickly caught. Corey Sutton, 34-35 yard line, out of bounds with an App State first down as Sutton makes his first catch. Kendall Vildor makes the tackle, slinging him into the bench. Zach Thomas, we talked about how dangerous of a quarterback he can be. Very accurate with his passing. I know he, his stats don't look good tonight, but you got to blame two of those drops on his receivers. Those were on the first drive of the game, too. Nearing a minute, left hash four wides from the 35. App State first down and 10 yards. Thomas claps, snap to him. Eagles bring four. Thomas looking short middle, leaping catch. It's Hennigan at the, rather that's Colin Reed, the tight end. Vildor couldn't pull him out of bounds. Reed passed the numbers to the 40-yard line, up near a first down, but he spotted the 43. App calls the timeout as the clock kept running all the way down to 52 seconds. And Vildor trying to strip him, walks right off the sideline, takes his helmet off, and goes to the bench. So look for... Lip drop to come in and replacement. If you're App State coaches, you've seen that too. You got to figure they're going to pick on him with 52 seconds to go until half, and you have the ball. Well, they're going to spot it at Danny 44. And it's going to be two, rather a yard shy of the first down. It's something to note that Georgia Southern is playing without reserve cornerback Justin Birdsong tonight, missing this game due to injury. So Brandon Cross would become the fourth cornerback. But if Terry is correct, and that's something substantial on Vildor, Lip Trot will be the next one in. So four plays, they get the ball, they start on the eight-yard line. Four plays later, they're on the 44, getting close to field goal range with this wind at their back. They had two first downs the entire half. They have three this drive already. Staten is their field goal kicker. He's out of Gainesville, Georgia. Seven of nine on field goals this year. Lip Trot is the quarterback on the boundary away from us. He's matched up with Sutton. Left hash from the 44. Second down in a yard. Under a minute to play in the half, Eagles up 10 nothing. Thomas against a four-man rush, looking right, wide open. Williams caught at the 49 into Georgia Southern Territory. And a first down for the Mountaineers at the Eagle 46. Third catch of the half for Malik Williams. Monquavian Brinson has the stop. Best that app has looked offensively all half. Oh, yeah, they're, they're doing a major two-minute drill here. You practice this every week, and he's executing it. Evans in the gun. Actually shifting into the pistol with three wides out to the left. 46 seconds left, second quarter, 10-0 Georgia Southern. Yeah. Thomas claps once, twice, looking quick middle, caught! That's Hannigan, he actually broke the tackle, but forward progress was stopped. Duncan had him, let him go, and App is furious that that play was called dead, but he had been moved backwards, but they're going to give him the original spot at the 39. Seven-yard reception, and the clock should be going, but a timeout was just called. App State burns its second with 37 ticks on the clock. Thought he might be able to get an interception there. Great wrap-up attack, and he did let him go because of the whistle. 
twice this half that's happened. Once against Georgia Southern where there could have been a fumble, play was blown dead. That time, if the play is kept alive, Hennigan was going to gain the first down, but he still has seven despite getting thrown back and then breaking away from Duncan, but the whistle had blown. Staten, the field goal kicker out of Gainesville, Georgia, for Ab State as long as 43 this season. Check that, 46. He kicked a 53-yarder against the Eagles here two years ago to end the first half. That's his career best. So he's got the leg, and he has the wind at his back. Not much of a wind, but it is wind, as the snow is just powdering off of the roof here on the press box side of the field. Acton checking into the ball game for the Eagles. Got to keep them in front of you. Maybe we can get a cheap turnover here. We'll take it. Two wides each side. Evans to the right of Thomas. At the Eagle 39, second down and three. 10-0 Georgia Southern. Eagles twist up front. They bring four. Quick throw to the right. That's caught 35-yard line. Outside the numbers. Daryl Baker Jr. has Hennigan, but he tossed him into the app bench. Just inside the 31 for another App State first down. That picks up nine. Hennigan has his third catch, second in a row. App in field goal territory. They're down to 31 seconds, only one timeout left. Thomas claps the hands with four wides from the 31. Thomas pressure looking near side for Hennigan. Reach over the top, not quite. He tried to moss Georgia Southern, if you will. Duncan was back. Lip Trot was back. Incomplete as the ball ricocheted harmly into the end zone with 25 seconds left. Eighth play of the drive coming up for Ab State. Wind is at their back. 25 seconds on the clock. Eagles up by 10. They started on their own eight-yard line. Kendall Vildor is being helped up the hill towards the Georgia Southern locker room across the street because of the renovations. They've got to go across the street, and he is taking a long time to get up that steep hill. We play on. Four wides, right hash, second down and 10 for the 31. Thomas looks right, another outright, caught 25. Eagles don't have anybody over there. Williams inside the 20, pushed out of bounds, close to the 15-yard line, a 16-yard catch, down to 20 seconds left first half. App is taking everything short, and they've gone from their own eight to the Eagle 15. 20 seconds remaining, he did go out of bounds, so the clock won't run. App only has one timeout, though. Georgia Southern just called a timeout. That's their first. Not a bad use of a timeout here at all. Get this momentum stopped a little bit. Russ, do you have any idea down there about Kendall? Yeah, it's a. it, it was his leg. That's what they were looking at. Uh, as soon as I can catch up with head trainer Brandon Klaus, we'll get an official word on that. I, I think they're taking him back to the locker room early just to get a jump on that long walk that Danny mentioned. By the way, this is a huge series right here, guys. Appalachian State's been able to take advantage of having the wind at their back. A good two-minute drill. Georgia Southern has the two-score lead. They'll get the ball coming out in the second half, but holding them to just even a field goal here would be huge because this Georgia Southern offense hasn't been able to do anything. You can really feel the momentum down here starting to switch into Appalachian State's favor. Thomas has hit his last five passes, six of seven on the drive for 61 yards as the football was at the Eagle 15. Georgia Southern, for what it's worth, two timeouts to call. App has one. 20 ticks on the first half clock. Georgia Southern up 10-0. Wesley Kennedy touchdown run. Tyler Bass 49-yard field goal. Drinkwitz was really having a hard conversation with the head referee. I'm curious what that was all about. Evans to the right of Thomas, who's been on point this drive. Drinkwitz wants the play changed. He is hopping up and down like a toddler wanting Thomas to audible. Plenty of time on the play clock. It is down to 10. Watch the center. Center of the field. Thomas changing the play to all four of his receivers. Play clock down to four from the right hash. Drops, four-man blitz. Thomas on the corner, tipped away. Was it picked? Did he get it? No, Ooh. incomplete. Ray, Raynard Ellis made a diving play in the end zone after Duncan, or rather Brinson, got a hand on it. It's going to get looked at from the booth. We don't have in-booth replay. Clock stopped with 15 seconds. It was close. May have hit the turf, may not have. You mean this Taj Mahal? We don't have a TV in here? Wow. Taj Mahal, nice. Well, way down there. You're right. Yeah, he a great play, great fall, and that was a touchdown. Had a corner out. It was Williams. Yeah, he was, he was there. 15 seconds left in the half. On the right hash, it's second and 10. App at the Eagle 15. This is the 10th play of the drive. Thomas with four wides. Looks left. Now middle. Nobody open. Thomas back right. 10 seconds left. Thomas rolling down to the 20. Looks in the end zone. He had a man open. Was that caught? Yes. Touchdown Mountaineers. Malik Williams. Third catch of the drive. What a pass. Made sure that both of his feet were in bounds. All you need to confirm is that the ball stayed off the turf. Thomas kept it alive. Remember, nobody was open until the end. And Apple's cut it to 10-6 with six seconds left in the first half. We've talked about his ability 
to extend the play, wait for a receiver to come open. He threw that ball exactly where he needed to throw it. Receiver made a good catch. Will it be reviewed? Got to get it's going to be reviewed. I don't have a it the ruling on the field was a completed catch for a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. All right, if it stands, it's a 10-play, 92-yard drive and a minute 42 to cut it to 10-6. And the Eagles do get the ball to start the second half. Wow. Did he have control of it coming down to the ground when it hit? Ball was moving wow. a little bit while he was trying to pull it to his body, but I don't know from that angle if there's going to be enough, enough to overturn it. Man, what a pass and what a catch. And good blocking, though, holding on the call. Usually you get you get a little cheap flag like that. Well, we were hoping to get a three-score separation going into half. It looks like we're just going to have a field goal separation. We do get the ball coming out in the second half. That's going to be awfully tough to overturn. Ten plays, 92 yards, only a minute 42. Oh, Boy. App is now out gaining Georgia Southern. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. App going into that drive had 58 yards of total offense, 92 on that 10 play march in which Thomas went 7 for 9 for 76 yards. And the touchdown pass is his 12th of the year. Staten on for the extra point to cut it to 3. Staten on kickoffs doesn't have a lot of touchbacks but he will have the wind at his back. Got the wind in the booth, too. Yeah, somebody about got a laptop. How to hold. Snap. That's through. App showing some offensive life for the first time in the game. Remember, they punted each of their first five possessions. Two of those were three and outs. But with six ticks left in the first half, a 15-yard receiving touchdown for Malik Williams. Good for his second of the year. Still Georgia Southern 10, App 7, and can't think you're going to expect much of Georgia Southern with six ticks left, but they get the ball at half, which becomes a vitally important drive. Yeah, no doubt about it. They'll kick in the end zone. We'll get it on the 25. We'll take a knee and take the long wall up to the temporary, talk, long walk up to the temporary locker rooms. And again, they're going to make, they've already obviously made some adjustments. Offense found some weakness against Georgia Southern's defense. That has really shut them down so far here tonight. But a lot of life, and now the big mo, as in momentum, is on App State's side going into the second half as the snow continues. The flurries continue to whip around here in Boone. And we got here with 68 degrees. It is currently 38, windy and blowing snow in Boone, North Carolina. This is the, no the norm for them. Don't see a whole lot of snow in southeast Georgia. And the ball blows off the tee. Well, we've seen Georgia Southern have to hold the yeah. last couple. Two, Staten <laughs> brings in his reserve defensive back. That's Caden Smith out of Mountain View in Lawrenceville to hold. You were talking about the temperature. I flew in on Eagle One with uh, Leonard Bevel and his crew. It was 73 degrees when we flew in. Staten approaches. Kennedy at the far side hash. Low kick. Ooh. Bounces at the 10 and then out of the end zone. Probably wise for Kennedy to go away from that when it was a low trajectory yeah. kick and had a lot of smoke on it with the wind behind it. Eagles should simply take a knee and go to the locker room with a halftime lead over the Mountaineers. Get an update from Russ here shortly. See how he's doing down there. He'll catch up with Chad Lunsford in about six seconds. Yeah. I was really worried about him and Frankie down there tonight. The sidelines with this weather. Well, we haven't been very nice to them because the last two weeks it's been rain, rain, kind of rain, slash snow. Yeah. Getting get all the elements in, that's for sure. And I'm the one with the cold. How about that? I'm in the booth, <laughs> and I'm the one sick. Wurtz is under center, takes the knee, and that's the end of the first half. You still got to like it a lot, despite App going downfield and scoring with six seconds left. At the end of the first half, Georgia Southern leads in Boone 10-7 to over the number 20-ranked Appalachian State Mountaineers. Let's go down to Russ Brown. Right here with uh, head coach Chad Lutz for 10-7 here at the half. Coach, your thoughts on the first half? Kind of a back-and-forth game there. Uh, yeah, it's a field position game. Uh, we were moving the ball pretty well on offense. Uh, you know, 10 points. We need to get some touchdowns. Uh, defense did a really good job up until that last drive right there. But what we taught our guys all week was we want a 60 or more minute dogfight. And that's what we're in right now. So we'll go challenge them right now to continue that dogfight. All right, Coach, get them in the second half. G-A-T-A. All right, Danny, we're back to you. 
30 minutes away, we hope, from Georgia Southern giving App State its first defeat of the year and first since October the 25th of last year when Georgia Southern turned that trick at Paulson Stadium. But a lot of work to do. The Eagles get the first possession of the second half when we get to it. Terry Harvin has some thoughts when we return as the Southern Halftime Report begins with Georgia Southern on top of the App State Mountaineers 10-7 from Boone. This is Eagle Football from Learfield IMG College. The second half is just around the corner on the Georgia Southern Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Wings up, Eagle Nation. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Now let's return to the Learfield IMG College broadcast booth. Here's Terry Harvin, Russ Brown, and the voice of the Eagles, Danny Reed. Georgia Southern has number 20, Appalachian State, on the ropes so far. A 10-7 halftime lead in Boone, North Carolina. A little bit more than 90 seconds before the start of the third quarter. Terry Harvin, a couple of stats for you. We know that Georgia Southern's been great when leading at the half. 16 consecutive wins dating back to 2017. App has also not won a game when trailing at the half since 2017. This is their field. They just had a 92-yard drive to get on the board for the first time. Georgia Southern has punted the last two times. They get the ball first. I need to see clock. I need to see points. I need to see the fire back in those blue and white eyes. Yeah, again, we need to put a touchdown on the board. Three points will put us up 13-7, to seven, but that just gives them one touchdown away. Touchdown will really give us some separation that we need. Need the defense to continue to keep playing strong. If you're a defensive guy, you love this ball game for what you see. Both defenses are keeping both offenses well below their average. App State having to do something different because the running attack is not working for them. Let's go down to the field with Russ Brown, Knox Pest Control sideline update. Russ, we saw C.J. Wright looking okay. What's the update on Kendall Vildor? Yeah, guys, I, I got to be honest, it doesn't sound good. Come up with head trainer Brandy Klaus. It is an ankle injury for Kendall. He's coming back onto the sidelines right now. I can tell you he's walking under his own power. He's got his helmet on. Brandy said they're going to try to get him back into the game, but she didn't think it was likely for the third quarter. Man. So I would say it's probably doubtful. But the problem with that, with this weather, it's just going to continue to stiffen and stiffen and stiffen. Good thing here is App State is kicking off into the wind, which means we'll be into the wind in the fourth quarter. I already mentioned that Staten doesn't have that many touchbacks when the weather is good. So we may have an opportunity here for a return. Can see Vildor walking gingerly on the very back of the sideline. Hopefully we don't see the defense for a while. We won't have to worry about it. Here comes the third quarter here in Boone. Here's Staten's kick. Nice kick, actually. Stays high. Kennedy calls for the fair catch at the two. So Georgia Southern begins at the 25. Didn't want to make any mistakes, so I guess we're going to get the ball at the 25. Again, crucial drive here for Georgia Southern. That's why you defer. You're up 10 to 7. Never go broke taking a profit. <laughs> Good point. We'll take that. We'll take that. Zach Thomas, 10 of 17 so far today. His average is getting a little bit better. Wirtz has just attempted three passes. He's one of three. That was a big third down conversion to Mashad. Kennedy's your leading rusher. 71 yards on the ground. I'd like to see him really. We got to get to the perimeter. Got to be able to cut it up. King and Kennedy split gun. Two wides right. Middle of the field. It's first and 10 for the Eagles at their 25. Kennedy on the fake. Here's the pitch near side for J.D. King. D1 attempted to throw the block, but Josh Thomas was having nothing of it. The all-conference safety snow plowed him after a gain of two to the 27. Well played by the corner. Well played. Took on Anderson, drove him back, shed him, and made the tackle. We did pick up two. Georgia Southern's last 11 plays have netted only 25 yards. Oh, they've dialed in on us. Make no mistake. Their defense is they made the adjustment in the second quarter, and they've been able to shut us down here. Eagles lead 10-7. Just underway second half from Kid Brewer Stadium. Eagles have not won here since 2007. Two backs, three wides out of the gun. App has backed up the linebackers a touch. His backer has his left hand on the football. True option left. Wurtz keeps. 30-yard line. Driving ahead. Close to the first down to gain. Actually, a couple of yards short of it. Down at the 32-yard line. Elijah Dirasuba, the junior defensive end out of Greensboro, North Carolina. 255 pound with the tackle. It's a big one. Third and three. Yeah, they're going to say he came up third, three yards short. Cam Brown, the tight end, or H-back, if you want to call him that. Checking into the ball game. Typically, your lead blocker. When it comes to the option, sneak him up the gut and throw him the ball for Pete's sake. I was actually thinking a pass, but you never know. Went at the back, 10-7 Eagles lead early third. 
Kennedy and King split gun. Tight right, Brown from the left hash. Third and three at the 32. Wirtz on the pitch, Kennedy. King throws the block, Kennedy, 35, 40, breaks the tackle. Kennedy up the near side, 40, 40, in out territory, 35, to the 30. Get a look at those tail feathers. Wesley Kennedy is gone again. Wakes up, Eagle Nation. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. 68-yard touchdown run for Wesley Kennedy, the third. 16-7 for the blue and white. That's how you make a statement. Wow, that took my breath away. Great block on the perimeter, on the option. He was able to find a seam. He cut up, and then it was all about putting the afterburners, and he took off going across the field so they couldn't run him down from behind, and not that they could anyway. It didn't take your breath away because I saw it. That's how cold it is. Here's the step and passes extra point. True blue again. Georgia Southern absolutely had to have points. They did it in a minute, 38 seconds. Now back on top of that by 10 again. It is 17 to 7. Carry out large three topping Domino's pizzas for $7.99 each every day, like today or tomorrow or yesterday, hypothetically. Turn, you said my breath and you're, it did get colder all of a sudden. Time out and boom, we're back with hey. more in just a moment from Learfield IMG College. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Georgia Southern Sports Network. Georgia Southern back on top by 10, 17 to 7. On third down and three from the 32, Wesley Kennedy takes off right. He took off middle, and he took off for six. Nine carries, 139 yards, two scores. His yards per carry is not of this planet, as the Eagles have a 17-7 lead with 13-22 left in this third quarter. The Eagles are Ford tough and Ford fast. Mr. Kennedy just showed that. Now it's time for the Ford score and drive. Ford F-150 works hard and never backs down because when you're built Ford Tough, the drive to win is everything. Ford Tough, Eagle Tough, the official truck of the Georgia Southern Eagles. Pretty easy to call this one. Three plays, 75 yards, a buck 38 off the clock. We we're wondering how we would respond coming into the second half after giving up the long drive by App State to close the gap to 10 to seven. That was a pretty good answer right there by Mr. Kennedy. He got a great block. He did see the seam. He was able to cut up. Cam Brown was your tight end. Eights back, moved up to the line of scrimmage, was able to seal off a linebacker, which is exactly what you need. And it was just off to the races. App State had only given up 17 combined points the last three weeks. That's 17 with 13.22 left in the third quarter. And something we saw during the timeout, App was assessed a 15-yard unsportsmanlike. So Tyler Bass is going to kick off from midfield. He may kick this over the scoreboard. Well, and a lot of times you'll see a team do an onside kick here. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't, I don't want to like give the percentages. I don't want to give Darius Evans a chance to run that ball. But I wouldn't mind perhaps. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Don't give him an opportunity to respond like that. Just drill this thing into the big video board. Kennedy the last two weeks now, 15 carries for 282 yards. Wow. What? What, it was 70, what? 71, 46, and now 67. I'll see a couple more of them. 68, I'm sorry. Bass is going to have this held for him by Daryl Baker. See where this ends up. Bass just decides to show off the leg. Touchback. <laughs> Went about 15 yards out of the end zone. So now we saw what Georgia Southern's offense could do in terms of a response. Will the defense say message received as well? As they gave up 156 total yards in that first half, but 92 were on that last drive. Well, again, Georgia Southern was in a prevent defense for the most part. It seemed that way. Zach Thomas was just able to pick his way down the field. Good passes, good catches. Again, we're going to flush him and put pressure. Let's make him roll out to the left versus the right. Darrington Evans, the pistol back, twins out to the right. First and 10 Mountaineers at their 25. Eagles show Blitzen back off. Play fake middle, throwing across the middle. Incomplete. That's another drop pass. Thomas Hennigan had Donald Rutledge creeping very close to him. That's the third drop pass of the evening for the Mountaineers. He felt the Eagle defender coming up on him. And besides making the catch, or instead of making the catch, he didn't want to get popped. We got to get our hands up there. Need to gleam to put his arms up and knock that pass down. Eagles shut down that app run game in the first half. 55 total yards. Evans, nine carries, 36 by himself. He's the, still the pistol back from the left hash. Stretch play, Evans running right. Eagles stand that up and shove him back. If it's anything, it's a yard. Third down and long. Cooper Hodges got thrown backwards. Give Reynard Ellis 
The tackle for the blue and white. That's his sixth tackle of the evening. Tied for a team high with Bird and Duncan. And that's really taking advantage of the right tackle, Cooper Hodges. Six foot four, 295. He's a red shirt freshman. App just two of seven on third downs. We go back to the stat from before. They're 51% on the year coming in. Evans remains in to the right of Thomas. Four wides with trips left. Eagles with a three-man front. Wade showing blitz. This is third and nine to 26. Thomas a deep drop way back between the ashes. Throwing short middle. It's caught 25. Oh, what a stick! Wow, Jay Bowdry. The hit stick living up to the moniker. A three and out. And the Eagle is still down outside the near hash. Remember, Kendall Vildor already down with an apparent injury. I think that's Bowdry. Yeah, it's Bowdry who made the play and then fell to the ground. I think he twisted his knee coming down afterwards. It looked that way. He's pounding the turf. He wasn't happy about it. Great pursuit. He closed quickly, Danny. Was able to knock his feet. It was a screen that was slow developing. And he came in there popped him. But when he was running away is when he fell down. So I'm wondering if in celebration, maybe his knee buckled. See, with everything the Eagles have dealt with injury-wise this year with Vildor already out, hopefully coming back in the fourth quarter. Bowdry getting looked at in between the hash and the numbers near side. It is going to be an Appalachian State punt. That is a three and out after the loss. We'll do that once we return. This timeout is brought to you by Case IH Tidewater. At Case IH, they're there to support you as you grow food, fiber, and fuel for the world. 17-7 Eagles lead, 12-22 third quarter from Learfield IMG College. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Georgia Southern Sports Network. App State runs three plays, goes backwards one yard. A tackle for loss by Jay Bowdry on the crossing route for Darrington Evans, his first catch of the ball game. Bowdry injured when he was trying to get to his feet. He did go off the field, helped by the athletic training staff. See if we can get an update from Russ Brown momentarily. We already heard that Kendall Vildor banged up an ankle. Questionable to return. Good thing is that's a three and out. Mountaineers to punt. And it's Jesse Liptrod into return. We've seen he and Kennedy rotate. Liptrod does have returning experience. He just did just about everything down at Fletcher High in Jacksonville. The App State punter standing on his own chin. J.D. King standing about the 39. They'll be punting into the win. Again, got to be really careful here. Field it cleanly or get away. Don't want to turn this ball over. Eagles have a 17-7 lead because of a 68-yard touchdown run by Wesley Kennedy the third on a third and three play on the first drive of the half from the 32, possibly trying to save him for the offense and not necessarily needing him out there for every punt return. This is Sabach's sixth punt. Three-man wedge in front, the lefty poots, and here it comes. Far side, not a good kick. Bounces in Eagle territory, 45. Slight hop, now rolling lateral laterally to the far side numbers to the 41 Easy it happens it happens it happens <laughs> punt goes for 35 eagle football with 11 54 third quarter up 10. i like you terry <laughs> but it usually happens to me <laughs> let's, let's be real here eagle offense coming back great field position for georgia southern coastal bass's offense out there pretty good play calls here we've seen tonight now again you got to extend this lead. You got to jump on them while you can. 31 carries, 200 yards for Georgia Southern tonight. Absolutely let one team go over 150 rushing this year. King on the dive left. He's pulling Blackstock with him outside the left hash, up close to midfield. JD King on first and 10 from the 42, grinds and splits the D for eight. It seems that every time he's touched the ball, it's taken at least two or three guys to simply stop him. App State, as they were trying to make the tackle, were trying to strip it at the same time. So you're seeing his strength. So they're more, uh, more concerned about the ball, and he was getting a good grip on it and just kept driving those legs. Second down and two from just short of midfield, left to right from the left hash towards the scoreboard. King the lone back, bunt trips off left tackle. Tight end Cam Brown is in. Wurtz awaiting the snap. Play clock shows seven. Wurtz claps oh. and a false start. That's Georgia Southern's first penalty in two games. It was Jared Leeds, the left tackle, that flinched. And it's a senseless false start. Offense. It's one of those seven. senseless five penalties. yard penalty. Still second down. It Coach took, Lusford talks about those. Well, it took a while for the snap to come. Wurtz was looking. I couldn't tell if he was trying to bring somebody in motion, if there was some kind of miscommunication, but that snap did not come when it was supposed to. 
So back it up five. It is second down and seven. Eagles at their 45. Up 17-7 with 10-57 in the moving third quarter. Those are what they call the drive killers, right? Because now you're second and long, not putting yourself in great position for third down. Left hash, same formation. Bunch trips off to the right. Here comes the motion they didn't get. That's for Murray. Wirtz still having Got the football problems. Walk down the middle. Wirtz is wide open. Splitting the hashes 40. 35 to the 30. Does he have enough? 20, 15, 10, 5. He's got six. Wings up, Eagle Nation. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Wow. A mirror image from 2018 at Paulson. Shy Wirtz down the seam after the false start. It's a 55-yard touchdown. 23-7 blue and white leads here in Boone. Thought we might get another penalty at the end of that play for unsportsmanlike because right as he crossed the goal line, the App State push, pushed him on his back really hard all the way through. Longest run of Shy Wirtz's career, 55 yards. His two longest have both been against App State. Bass's PAT is good. How about that to start the third quarter? A Kennedy 68-yard touchdown. Wirtz from 55. This is the biggest deficit that App has faced all season. 24-7 in Boone with 10.35 to play third quarter. Morris Bank is the presenting sponsor for the 2019 season. Bleed Blue, Bank Blue, Morris Bank, member FDIC. This is Georgia Southern Football from Learfield, IMG College. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Georgia Southern Sports Network. Two plays, buck 19, 58 yards, shy words, shy words, shy words. It's an option to the right. He sees a seam open up. I mean, it was so big, a Ford F-150 could have driven through it, oh, and he ran right on. through it. And what a great transition <laughs> to the Ford scoring drive because the Ford works hard, never backs down. When you were built Ford tough, when you were built Eagle tough, the drive to win is everything you do, and we appreciate Ford in the Ford F-150 for being the official truck of the Georgia Southern Eagles. Eagles now take a 24 to seven lead with 10.35 here in the third quarter. In Boone, North Carolina, Tyler Bass gets ready to kick off. And again, this is a very, very good app team that has the ability to come back quickly. We saw how fast they could score at the end of the second quarter. Need to continue to be dialed in and make Thomas uncomfortable. In the first 425 of the third quarter, Georgia Southern has carried eight times for 138 yards. Wow. Up to 263 for the game. That's the most rushing that App has allowed since they gave up 277 to Georgia Southern in Statesboro last year. Don't give up the big one. Stay smart. Play with emotion, but not overly. Step on their throat and don't let them breathe. Here comes Bass's kickoff. Wind at his back. Evans refuses to catch it. Seven yards deep. Touchback. Touchback. App at the 25. They went three and out to start the third quarter. Bowdry left with an apparent leg injury. We'll get something from Russ Brown momentarily once a status update is provided to him. But if this defense can continue to ball out, get the offense back on the field and chew this clock. Again, putting pressure on Thomas, not, getting, not letting him be comfortable, make him roll out to the left versus the right. You got to feel like they're going to pick on Lip Trot over there with Vildor being out. Three wides left, tight end Pearson the closest in that slot in between the hashes. Right hash, first and 10, 25-yard line. That got blown up back at the 20. Randy Wade just ate Darrington Evans. Tackle for loss number five for the blue and white. And that is his second. Got another eagle down, Terry. Oh, my. Come on. Reynard Ellis, the inside linebacker. Oh, he's a good one, too. Ellis already has six tackles on the night himself with a one for loss. Acton's in the ball game, going to be getting a lot more snaps with Baldry being out. How about five tackles for loss by five different players? Twelve tackles for loss a week ago was the most for Georgia Southern since 2008. Let's hope Reynard Ellis doesn't have anything too serious. It seems this has been one thing after the other for Georgia Southern much of this season. There is a bit of a, a, bit of a hobble, but... Head athletic trainer Brandy Klaus has him to his feet, and he's walking towards the defensive huddle. Bird is the leading tackler tonight so far. He has seven with four solos. Duncan's got six with five solos, then followed by Ellis with six. Wade has three, as I've already mentioned, including one for a loss and a pass breakup. 
We'll go down to Russ Brown here in just a moment. That officially is a three-yard loss. They gave Evans forward progress to the 22. Chris Harris is in at linebacker at a Benedictine to replace Reynard Ellis. Press coverage late from, from Brinson looking near side. Thomas, he may have gotten hit as he threw looking deep on the post. Incomplete. Double coverage downfield to the right side. Hash. Hedigan jumped up inside of Liptrot and Rutledge, but that ball just sailed. Quickly down to Russ Brown. Russ, you have anything on Jay Bowdry? Yeah, Jay is being taken back to the locker room. Danny, no official word yet, but he was trying to get on the exercise bike and his right leg locked up. It looks like cramps. He's walking under his own power. I don't know if he's going to get fluids or what, uh, but it looked like cramping for Jay Bowdry, so he's headed to the locker room. I'd like to see him go after that ball versus holding his arms up because it's almost like I didn't do it, I didn't do it. Go for the ball. They got the speedy receiver into the ball game now, Virgil. Five wides total. This is third and 13 half, but it's 22. Georgia Southern 24-7 the lead. Two long rushing touchdowns this half. Thomas against the three-man rush. Looking across the left side. Caught. That's Hennigan near side at near sideline 45 and out of bounds. Boy, that was almost another interception for Georgia Southern's Donald Rutledge. Let Ecton downfield to bump him out of bounds at the Eagle 49-yard line. Wide open down the sideline just beyond the fingertips. Talked about Thomas and his ability. He's a cool cat, sits in the pocket, lets things develop, let his receivers get open. He has the ability to run, so we got to watch that. Some fresh white uniforms coming in. 28-yard catch on third and 13 to keep it alive. Evans the pistol back, left hash, Eagle 49, first and 10 stretch play. Left Eagles turn it back in like they've done all night. And Trevor Bleem downfield to make the tackle. Only a gain of a yard for Darrington Evans, second and nine. He has largely been bottled up, 12 totes, only 36 yards. The right tackle, the left tackle for App State has had nothing for Vleem so far tonight. He's either been involved or tackles or at least pushing them back in. Evans out. Marcus Williams checks in the reserve. He had four carries, 10 yards in the first half. He's offset left, tripped out to the far right. 9.05 third quarter. Eagles up 24-7 in Boone. Haven't won here in 12 years. Thomas the clap. Eagles bring four. Thomas left, back right. Thomas away from Wade in the grass. Throwing left. Caught sudden near sideline. 42-40. And a first down before Kendrick Duncan could officially wow. pull him out of bounds. With Randy Wade pretty much on him, Thomas completes the pass for a 10-yard gain. And we talk about how good this kid is. Right there, he showed a little Brett Favre in him there. This is the tempo they showed at the end of the first half when they scored. Out of the pistol, bubble screen right from the Eagle 37. First and 10, here's Malik Williams, waits for the block to set up. Hennigan didn't get enough wow. of the block inside the 35 to the 34 for a gain of three. Williams comes up with his sixth catch. That's a team high. Also ties a career high, incidentally. Acton just planted him into the turf, too. Hit him hard and took him down. He was able to pick up. They're going to give him four yards, Danny. At the 33, App goes right to left towards the open north end zone. That's where they're placing the new ops facility that should be done by next fall. They're sinking 45 mil into it. App in a sugar huddle trying to get to the line of scrimmage quickly. And again, split left at the hash. Williams is the back under center. Here comes a reverse out to the near side. Ecton tries to turn it back in. It does so very well. Eagles with two hits, and there's the stop made at the 33. Not a whole lot. In fact, that is no gain. Ty Phillips made the stop as the reverse came to the speedster. Jalen Virgil, Chris Harris involved as well, Terry. Harris did a great job of coming up on the linebacker and pushing him back. Duncan coming in there as well. Good read. They didn't get burned by it. App State now in a third down situation, and tonight so far they're three of nine. Four down territory. Uh, yeah, I would think so. 7.35 in the third. Georgia Southern up 24-7 in Boone. Evans returns, set off to the left of Thomas. Plenty of time on the play clock. Thomas looks to change the play, moving towards the line of scrimmage. Wipes his hands off, backs up with three wides right. Watch the center of the field here. Draw play. Juke cut Evans running right, broke away from the tackle, 30-yard line into the broken tackle off to the far side, numbers 20, down to the 15, and out of bounds with a first down. Rashad Bird did enough to get Evans out of bounds at the 14, but that was his best run of the night 19 yards breaking two tackles to earn that first down all by himself he did a great job of breaking those tackles you just can't arm tackle and bring this guy down Ecton and Rutledge had chances oh, but yeah. Darrington Evans he's quite good I got the 10th play of the drive coming up the start of the 25 it's good enough for me pistol back Evans right hash from the Eagle 14 first and 10 app under six and a half to play in the third quarter, Georgia Southern owns a 24-7 lead. Kennedy, 139 on the ground, two scores. Thomas, pistol handoff. Evans breaking left, and Evans wrapped up and brought down. C.J. Wright! Screven County Gamecock makes the play. They call that a yard loss back to the 15. 
Six tackles for loss, and another eagle is down. It is C.J. Wright for the second time tonight. He is back up. Looks like he's grabbing a leg, and he's going to need to be helped off. Where he was grabbing it, though, is in the calf area. Yeah, it's the left leg. So how he could cramp in this weather, I don't know, but you could. I think at this point, you'd have hot chocolate instead of a sports drink or water, wouldn't you? So an impressive drive that App State is coming back with from two quick scores by Georgia Southern. This one started on the 25, and Zach Thomas showing what everybody knew about. All right, so Wright is off the field. Springer, Vleem up front. Georgia Southern needs a defensive tackle. He's Ty coming. Phillips has to sprint on late. Hannigan to take a Wildcat snap. Handoff, it's a scissors play out to the right. Williams block on the edge on Wade. Duncan catches up, helped out by Liptrot. Williams doesn't get a whole lot out of bounds at the Georgia Southern 12-yard line. That was the old wing T inside scissors handoff to Malik Williams. The first handoff went to Evans. He then gave it to Malik Williams, but it only nets down to the 12-yard line. This they, is third down and seven. They were asking for a hold on Liptrot over there on the side. And what does it say when App State's having to... Having to resort to trick plays here at this point, I'm a little surprised. Apps had the football for nearly five minutes. Thomas back in. Evans is offset left behind left tackle Victor Johnson. A good one, but he's been hurt all year. We need a Four wides. Over. I'll take it. Third and seven at the Georgia Southern 12. Eagles blitz. Thomas looking left, throwing to the flat. Way too high. He about threw it into the cheerleaders, looking for Evans out of the backfield. Monquavian Brinson gave the obligatory coverage, but the Eagles get the stand, and Staten comes on for three. Yeah, you give up three here. You're still, you're up 14. That's five minutes with the football, trying to just get three points. Just get in a 13-play drive. Might be able to get to him here if the wind is, the wind has really died down. And yeah, not a whole lot of movement from those what Russ has to say on the sideline about it. 29-yard try for Staten, right hash. How the backup hunter holds it. Johnstone, the new long snapper, does that. Eagles have blocked two kicks this year. Get a good rush. Kick on the way. Plenty of height. He missed it. It's no good. He pushed it off to the right. A 29-yarder goes awry. A five-minute possession nets App State absolutely nothing. What wow. makes Queensboro the best bank for Georgia Southern University alums? Several locations near campus and many more throughout Georgia. We support the Eagles and are ready to support your banking needs. Queensboro, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Let's go down to Russ Brown with a Knox Pest Control sideline update. Russ, we're seeing a lot of guys limp off the field. What do you think the issue's been? Uh, it, it looks like cramping. A, a, a lot of the guys just then coming off. Uh, Matt Greenlaw, the strength and conditioning coach, every, all the coaches making sure these guys are getting their fluids right now. As Terry said, it seems odd in this weather. Uh, that that would be an is issue, but we're seeing these guys just kind of locking up So everybody trying to make sure they get plenty of fluids in them right now Gavin Adcock nose tackle has gone into the tent So as soon as he comes out, we'll figure out what's going on with him I can say he didn't look like he wanted to go into the tent. So hopefully he's okay Georgia Southern is going to take over at the 20 yard line following Staden's missed field goal only the third he has missed all year so reliable he has been since unseating Michael Rubino a couple of years ago. He actually forced Rubino to transfer out. Staten, though, misses from 29, and after Georgia Southern's offense has shown the ability to break off the big chunk, they're right back to the field. But again, the conditions gets inside your head. Said it over and over again. You got to make it between the ears before you make it between the sticks. Georgia Southern continue to play smart, grinding football. And if you get an opportunity to take one long, you just outrun them. The 68 yard touchdown run by Kennedy. That's the longest play that App has given up this year, incidentally. Murray motions into the backfield. Here comes the dive. King breaks a tackle. Middle of the hashes. 25 stays up. 30 yard line. Broke another tackle. Still going in. Broke another tackle. Block stuck from behind. King is not going down. Up to the 37 yard line. 17 for J.D. King. That's his longest carry of the evening. And another Morris Bank first down. Georgia Southern's 12th of the game. If you go and look at that, you see that a lot of their tackles, they're tackling the ball. They're trying to rip it out too much versus just bring him down. You get a good, strong back like King, it's hard to do that. They are taking App State's heart in Boone. Work to do, but the Eagles are looking mighty fine at this point. Split gun, LaRoche and King from the 37 inside the left hash. It's first and 10. QB lead for Wurtz, breaks one tackle, dragging fair with him up past the 45, and he has a Morris Bank first down, not quite. Fought, but the linesman 
curiously moves back a yard, so it's a <laughs> nine-yard run to the 46. You saw what I yes. did. You he, saw what I did. He was about to move the chains. He said, ah, <laughs> let me go back a little bit. But second and one, again, great position, a good position. So maybe take a shot. Why not? App is looking around as to what do we do. They've given up 289 yards rushing on better than eight yards a clip. Second and a yard at the 46 for Georgia Southern. It's LaRoche and King in that gun. Tight end Cam Brown set behind Drew Wilson. Blitz coming. Here's King. Easy first down. Fair got the first hit, but again, J.D. King does not go down on first contact. Give him a gain up to the 48. First down, Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern now for 300 yards of total offense. You're talking about an App State defense that's only allowed an average of 140 yards of rushing per game. They have been giving up. They have held opponents to 3.9 yards per carry. Georgia Southern football up 24-7, 340 left and running third quarter. App just missed from 29 after a 5-minute, 12-second drive. Three wide receivers. Murray motions into the pistol. The dive goes to LaRoche. Downhill. LaRoche still going close to the 45-yard line. Hangs onto the football with two hands, and his knees ends up touching at that 45-yard line. Seven-yard gain for Matt LaRoche as we should go under three minutes the next time the ball gets snapped in this third quarter of play. We are averaging 8.1 yards per rush tonight. Eagles in the first half had 125 yards on the ground. This quarter, 173, granted 68 from Kennedy and 55 from Wirtz. A big reason why the number is so high as the wind is picked up and the goalposts are blowing around. Middle of the hash is three wides. Murray comes in motion, second and three at the 45. LaRoche starts left, bangs back right, ran over to Marco Jackson, the linebacker. Close to a first down in between those hashes. The line judges come in towards their respective hatches and put this football down about a half a yard shy of the first, just a touch inside of the 43-yard line. Third and short is exactly what Georgia Southern wants. They're 4 of 8 tonight after going 4 of 9 last week. Stay on the field. Do not give him the ball back. Anderson comes wide to the right. King the lone back. App has eight in the box. Murray motions from the right. Hand off King. Picks his way through. Morris Bank first down. Ran through Jackson. Ran through Fair. Cook helps out. King moves the chains down to the App 40 with 2.08 to play third quarter. Eagles now five of nine converting third downs. Good hard nose running. Bringing back in the tight end. The backup tight end. Chase Hancock. We've mentioned him several times tonight. Just a freshman getting some playing time decide whether he could be redshirted or not so he's getting those four games and the wind is really starting to come wow it's starting to blow first time in four years that app state has given up more than 300 yards rushing that was against arc state which is the last time they lost a conference game in boone brown shuffles his motion into the backfield as the wind is really howling Wurtz running the option right, cuts up inside the 40-yard line hangs onto that football jordan fair came up to lay the lumber Wurtz is down just short of the 39-yard line. Didn't follow his block there. He cut inside of Cam. Look at the pads and the flags from the oh, cheerleaders. Yeah. They're just blowing everywhere. Cam had his block and in position. And Shy cut up versus following around the backside. The wind is really coming in from the backside of us over the top of the stadium towards the field and then swirling back up. Four first downs this drive for Georgia Southern. They've already held it for four minutes and 20 seconds. Kennedy and LaRoche with Wirtz in that spread gun. Two wides. Wirtz changing the play. Seven on the play clock. This is second down. They are calling it nine from the app 39. Wirtz option right. Has two blockers. Kennedy a block on the edge. There's LaRoche inside the 35. Up the numbers. Close to the 30-yard line of what could be another Morris Bank first down. We will check the official spot from the linesman with 44 seconds left in the third period. Wow. The chains on the far side want to move. It is confirmed they do move a Morris Bank first down, Terry Harvin. And Gene Charles, the corner for App State, played that perfectly. He took on the block, threw him out of the way, and still wasn't able to make the tackle. Ninth play of the drive coming up. They're starting on the 20-yard line. And they've all been runs. This could be the final play of the quarter. 20-19-18. Right hash at the App 30. First and 10 for the blue and white. Wirtz has the snap. Interior carry LaRoche. Spins his way back towards the uh, near side and dropped at the 30. No gain, but that thought they were going to stop the clock for a moment. All is well. 
at the moment. And there are the high fours for the blue and white on the far side. What a quarter for Georgia Southern. Outscoring at 14-0 thanks to a 68-yard touchdown run from Kennedy, a 55-yard touchdown run from Wirtz, and a defense that has dominated since the second half began. We have played three in Boone. Georgia Southern 24, App State 7. They can mow Bamba here at Kid Brewer Stadium. Georgia Southern football is proudly brought to you by Zaxby's in your neighborhood, Zaxby's Restaurant. Indescribably good for over 20 years. Found first in Statesboro, now found worldwide. Eagles are 15 minutes away from knocking off the highest ranked team in Sunbelt history. Can they do it? You got to stick and stay to find out. This is Eagle football from Learfield IMG College. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Georgia Southern Sports Network. Knox Pest Control has been servicing Eagle Nation in Alabama, Florida, and Georgia for generations. Knox knocks them out. This looks like a reincarnation of Twister and the Santa Claus all at once, but whatever it's been, Georgia Southern holds a 17-point lead 24-7 over the number 20 ranked App State Mountaineers to start quarter number four. Georgia Southern got the ball back with 523 remaining in the third quarter following Chandler Staten's missed 29-yard field goal. They've run it nine consecutive times, 50 yards on the ground. Terry, in that third quarter, Georgia Southern ran 14 plays. You want to guess how many of those were running plays? I would say uh, 14. 14, 188 yards in the third quarter. No need to throw it if they can't stop your run. And right now, this is going to eat up clock. They want to give it to you, sure. But now we're heading into this blizzard, if you will. And when I say it's just swirling all over the place, we're going to have the ball spotted at the 30-yard line. 15 minutes is on the clock. The Eagles up 24 to 7. And a big, it's a second down, so we need a good chunk on here so we can convert on third down. J.D. King, the pistol back, three wides out to the left. Murray, Anderson, Mashad in that order. Mashad at the numbers. King shuffles left, ball on the right hash, now going right to left. Another run play, 10th in a row. King inside of Fair, broken initial tackle. Franklin comes up from safety, but J.D. King, he is so impressive. Stays along the right hash, down to the 20. Six yard line for four. It's third down and six. Drive is nearly six minutes old. And remember, the Eagles have already converted once on third down this drive. Five of nine overall. They kept they kept pushing and churning his legs. The offensive lineman pushing behind him to help him out a little bit. Eagles getting in a huddle, eating this clock up. Southern on third down. Five, and Five nine. of nine. There you go. King remains in with Wirtz. Georgia Southern 24-7 lead in Boone. 14-20 left in the ball game. App showing blitz. Here comes motion from Hood. Hand off King. Stood up inside the 25. Does get down to the 24, but he is still four yards short of the first down. Give Noel Cook, the former walk-on outside linebacker, the tackle. <laughs> yeah, Bass has made this direction from 49 already. Uh, and they're going to send him out. Wow. That's some confidence in your kicker. If you could see what we're seeing right now, there are leaves. I keep waiting for Dorothy to come flying by. You know what I mean? Uh, where's the red sli slippers? This is crazy. This is from 41 and would be Bass's 27th career field goal of 40 or more. He already owns the school record. 24-7, currently the lead. Play clock to eight. Lying in the snapper, Beck the holder. First two parts good. Bass got an early start. Still hits plenty of this on its way. Wind no good it. off to the right. The wind pushed it right. Yep. Just what we saw in pregame. Yep. It's exactly what we saw in pregame. The wind just pushing the ball right off the field. I was actually thinking I wouldn't be surprised if it was a fake in there. Timeout on the field. Get officially licensed polos, T-shirts, hats, and more from the university store. Shop Southern by going online to gsustore.com. Mountaineer football with 13.29 left. Georgia Southern 24, App State 7. From Learfield IMG College. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Georgia Southern Sports Network. 12 straight running plays, 56 yards, 6.54 off the clock, but no points as Tyler Bass pushes one off to the right from 41, more than enough distance, but the wind, as it's been howling, we mentioned it, it just took it and didn't allow it to go through. So App with just the thinnest little bit of hope with 13, 29 to play. 
Georgia Southern 24, the number 20, App State Mountaineers 7. We have belabored this, but we got to go back to it. App has not lost a game since Georgia Southern beat them in Statesboro last October, 34-14. App was number 25 that night. Mountaineers have won 13 in a row. They've won 14 in a row here at the Rock. They have not lost to a conference team here in four years. But Georgia Southern is on the cusp of doing something so, so special. Keep in mind, this is an App State team that comes into the ball game averaging 41 points a ball game. They can put the points up, and they've already proven and shown that they can score quickly. Defensively, going to have to put some pressure on Thomas. You can't just let him sit there in the pocket or let him roll out to the right. We've got to get to him, but at the same time, watch the underneath passes and don't get beat deep. App State had a 13-play drive, ate up a lot of clock, and missed a field goal. We come back with a 12-play drive, uh, drive, ate up a lot of clock, missed a field goal. But <laughs> those, we're up 17. Those last we'll two drives it. were more than 12 minutes, and nobody scored. That's weird. Jalen Virgil is about to split left once the media timeout is over. Marcus Williams, the pistol back, with Zach Thomas at the queue. 14 of 24 passing for 142, but 76 of that came on that touchdown drive at the end of the second quarter. So outside of that, not much. His receivers haven't helped him either with three drops. He mentioned Virgil. Watch him. Here comes Virgil, mosting off right tackle. That's actually the tight end, Colin Reed. They fake the dive. Thomas looking deep middle. Thomas caught. Corey Sutton had to slide at the right hash to keep it from hitting the turf. That is a first down for App State up at the 46. Nice pass. Got into the seam right behind the linebacker. Got in between the safety and the corner. Sliding catch. Just like that, App State's in midfield. Gain of 22 for Sutton. Three catches, 43 this game. Williams leads them 6 for 69, including the 15-yard touchdown in the second quarter. Marcus Williams offset left, two wides each way, middle of the field. On the 46, throwing out to the right, incomplete. Looking for Hennigan on the right side, slot. But the ball was badly overthrown. Brinson was in coverage. Got another player down, coming in, trying to rush. It's Raymond Johnson again. He's down. He came back, though. C.J. Wright was down, came back, but then he left again last drive. Russ said that a lot of guys look to be cramping, which would seem to be somewhat odd with as cold as it is yeah we're bringing in some backups Quinn Williams out of Madison Georgia red shirt freshman they walked him up at the outside linebacker put him on the line of scrimmage there Terry we've also got an app offensive lineman down that's the right guard bear hunter that's pretty much laying next to Raymond Johnson but Raymond at least is being put into a seated position we'll check on both when we return from this break bb and t is rooted in the eagle nation community for more than 140 years sharing financial knowledge with their clients their neighbors and their friends member fd I see with 1301 to play in boone georgia southern 24 number 20 app state 7 from learfield img college from learfield img college this is the georgia southern sports network Georgia Southern is scouring the depth chart, at least on the defensive line, as Raymond Johnson left for the second time in the game. Ty Phillips also left the field. But the fact that Georgia Southern has had to bring in so many guys and they've only given up 240 total yards to the best offense in the league really speaks volumes to the intensity and the fight that they brought. And that's why they lead 24-7 with 13-01 to play in the fourth. I mentioned Quinn Williams. He is back out there. They have him an outside linebacker, but they're walking him up on the line. And then you got Parker Devine in there as well, right up the gut in that 3-4 defense, taking the outside linebacker, walking him up on the line. Kind of the old bear style, if you remember. Good thing is that Reynard Ellis has returned. He was out earlier. Acton on the right edge at the right side hash. That's the far side of the field. Mountaineers second and 10 at their 46. Bear Hunter, the right guard, had to leave. So replaced up front by Cole Garrison. Thomas, straight drop against the four-man rush, looking deep the right side. Slot. Oh. He... Almost picked and almost caught, but incomplete. Kendrick Duncan was over the top of Keyshawn Watts in the Western Michigan transfer. A peculiar play, but it's third down and 10 with 12.54 left. Acton, who's come in for boundary, he sneaks up for boundary. He sneaks up and comes in with a blitz. Chooses the wrong side, unfortunately. Wasn't able to get pressure on Thomas. Abbott, it's 46, third and 10. Just 4 of 11 on third downs. Georgia Southern leading the Mountaineers 24 to 7. Eagles bring four. Zone coverage. Thomas looks middle. Longer middle. Incomplete. Ball was batted down at the right side. Hash at the Eagle 40. Left try. Batted that free of Corey Sutton. 
Timing, timing. He got right there as the ball came. Fans are wanting a penalty there, but if you go back and look at it, he made contact right when the ball did, and App State still struggling on third down. Now four of 12. It is fourth down and 10, and they're going to have to punt once again. The busy beaver that's been Xavier Savage comes back on. This is the area of a fake, and I'm sure Georgia Southern is wary of that. Zach Thomas, 15 of 28 tonight for 164. Kennedy back in to return the punt. Heels at the 20. Eagles bring four. Sabacha high punt towards the middle of the hashes. Kennedy fair catch. you got to give him room, son. They did barely, and he makes the fair catch at the 20. Goodness. 35-yard <laughs> punt, no return. We'll keep it right here and go down to the field with Russ Browning. Knox Pest Control sideline update. Russ, Georgia Southern's on the cusp of history with 12.41 left. Up 17 in Boone where they haven't won in a dozen years. What is that sideline like from your eyes? Uh, it's very, very, very excited group of Eagles down here. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of cramping issues like we talked about. Uh, Raymond Johnson on the exercise bike. Hopefully he's going to be able to get back into the game. Kendall Vildor on the sideline cheering on his teammates with a big old smile on his face with this lead right now. But it doesn't look like he's going to be able to go. Uh, Brandy Klaus was hoping he could be back in in the fourth quarter. Uh, and Ty Phillips has been taken to the locker room. Not sure what the issue was there. And the 45-mile-an-hour winds have taken out the uh, training table tent. And the pylons in the end zone. Kennedy, by the way, is at 139 yards. Danny on nine carries. That's pretty good average, 15.4 yards per carry, long of 68. Nice. Shy Wirtz at 77 on nine. J.D. King, he's turning and burning at 19 carries at 68 yards, but he's getting those crucial first downs, really driving his legs, and you got to give credit to the offensive line. He's kind of been an offensive line by committee. I'm filling people in. Who else do I have that might be able to play offensive line? I'm going to put him there. You want a number? I'll give you a good number. Going back to the beginning of the ULM game, last 28 drives, App State had only given up a field goal while forcing 23 and outs. Wow. Georgia Southern has won three and out all night. With a banged up offensive line against the one, maybe one of the best defenses in G5. But that's called bringing the fight. We've seen it on defense. This half, we've seen it on offense with just about 200 yards rushing. Well, you know, at the end of the day, it's about matchups. And it's about the game that you're playing right then. I mean, you're talking about a Minnesota team that's, what, 8-0 now? Yeah. I, I, a Minnesota team. Got Penn State we, coming up there next, next, we uh, next played Saturday. We didn't, didn't felt like we, we gave them, we gave the win away, right? We, I was sitting here thinking that this, we're playing the second best team on our schedule to date outside of LSU. But it depends on the game, right? You got to come to play. Things have to click. Georgia Southern needs to continue to just do what they're doing, protect the football, Churn the clock, churn the yards, drive down the field, put some more points on the board. Fourth eagle possession this half. Touchdown, touchdown, missed field goal, but that missed field goal chewed up almost six and a half minutes of clock. The red hat lost his red hat. He's lost and, everything down there. Look at Well, they about lost the digital time, which shows you how much is left in the media break. We're ready to go now. Georgia Southern has the ball situated. Just to the left of center, going right to left. Words out of the gun. King on his, or rather Kennedy on his right. Faked him. Quick pitch. Murray. He had to get it away before Gaither. Murray up the right ash 20. And Thomas comes up. I don't know if Murray ever went down, but the official does come in to mark him at the 21. Murray trying to say that he never went down, but he was ruled down on Thomas's tackle. Gain of a yard. And it's second down and nine as we should see this next snap come with under 12 minutes left. Juking a little bit too much, trying to balance it out. Need to cut it up and get the yardage. App State look for that more, taking more chances, taking a shot to try to force a turnover. They've got to get a turnover. So they are, go, look at that. They put the ball down and the wind blew the ball. They had to go get it. Davis Gaither about forced to fumble. Shy works though with a well-timed pitch and a well-placed pitch to Malik Murray. Three minutes into the fourth quarter, up 24-7, right hash, second down. We'll call this eight from the 22, gave him an extra yard. Wurtz gives to Kennedy, breaking left, away from Fair, got him from behind and hog tied him. Eagles hoping for a horse wow. collar, clock is stopped, I think and there is a flag be. down. I think a flag so. down. Because I thought it might be on the offensive lineman, but he wasn't near that play, so I'm, I'm wondering if it is going to be a horse collar. We'll take it. Georgia Southern's walking backwards, but we'll see. Oh, come on, give it to us. It is inside the 20, middle of the hashes. Yeah, they're going Holding. Uh, Offense number 71. That penalty is declined. Third down. That's the second penalty is they declined it. So that sets up a third down and 
eight from the 22. Wise to decline the penalty. Apps down 17. They need points in the ball back. It was on Peyton Backer, but declined. So Georgia Southern still only has one penalty this game after not committing a single foul all of last week. Batting 500 on third downs. We're five of 10, but the difference is those third and shorts. This is third and long. App playing press coverage. Four total wide receivers. Kennedy offset right. App planning on bringing at least four. Here they come. Blitz was free from Gaither. Wurtz broke broke free in between the hashes. Back near the 20. Stretching to get back to the line of scrimmage. And he barely did so. Akeem Davis Gaither about had the sack. And he's the one that makes the stop for the Mountaineers. So App State's going to get it back. Gaither now with 14 stops. One off a career high. Because he was spun around the way he was. Couldn't see the, the whole, I guess I said, the area he should have taken off to. He comes back in to the defenders as Beck runs out in the field, getting ready to punt into this win. So great field position coming up for App State. You got to feel like they're going to come after it here. He's standing on his own eight-yard line. You got to have good protection here and a good snap. App, five block kicks this year. Three of them have been punts. He has that wedge in front of him. Beck's been able to pin App deep, but the wind is coming at him. Get the ball away. He does. Spiraling kick. Hennigan calls for the fair catch, and he dropped it. It's rolling free back inside the 35, picks it up, and it's automatically down because he called for a fair catch. So the ball is dead at the spot of the pickup, which is back at the 33-yard line. The Eagles gain seven extra yards of field position because Hennigan, who's dropped two passes, dropped that and almost committed a turnover. With 10-38 to play, it's Mountaineer football at their 33, Georgia Southern 24, the Mountaineers 7. We talked about the speedy Virgil. They really haven't targeted him much tonight, if at all. He's going to go wide and go lock up with Lip Trot over there. They ran that reverse to him that Georgia Southern kept within the box. Eagles with five across the front, two blitzing backers. One of them comes off the left. Thomas looking to the left. Ooh. A low pass. Ooh. That's caught at the 39. App State wants interference. Now they say incomplete as Virgil couldn't pull it in. Jesse Lip Trot is showing the football. He may have had early contact, and that's what App is griping about but it's second down and ten yeah not a bad gripe not a bad gripe they did target Virgil there on that go. play there you go Georgia boy from Mountain View but they did it on a slant this guy's a speedy guy man take him down the sideline and throw it up set on the right hash second down and ten app at its 33 four wides offset left Evans he throws the block Thomas Wide looking out to the left caught at the left side numbers 45 yard line into Georgia Southern Territory that's Hennigan Raynard Ellis downfield to bring him down at the 46 crossing route all the way across wide open Thomas gets rid of it right in time 20 yard pass Thomas looking on the bubble right on first and ten and it was forward, looking for Keyshawn Watson, incomplete. We've got Acton. Uh-oh, Acton. Acton. Yep. Uh, Crap. Well, he and Hennigan were locked up. Acton slashed at him with the right hand on the shoulder pad. The hope is that you'll get alternating, but I think I Acton's going to be the guilty party. Yeah. He's the one that swung second. I can, I can translate that if you want. All right, Acton just got called for unsportsman. Like the wind is blowing so hard that it made the ref, Mike. Great field position they're going to have Pointless. now. Again, we talk about the mental breakdown, mental mistakes. You can't have them. Got a little frustrated. Acton's been yanked out of the ball game. That was close to a punch, but fortunately it landed on the shoulder pad and not Hennigan's face mask. They're bringing in McGee. The redshirt freshman out of Bainbridge. And Zion out of South Georgia. Way down there in South Georgia. See if he can get to Thomas. Evans offset left. Eagles bring three. Thomas left hash 35. Looking down the middle. That is incomplete. Threw it behind Virgil. Or I'm sorry, Keyshawn Watson. My apologies. Watson was open against the zone coverage, but he had to turn backwards and almost tied himself up. Again, you, we talked about the weather and the impact it has on throwing the ball. Even if you've got the wind at your back, it's still whipping down there. He has way too much time back there to throw the ball. Got to figure out a way to get to him. Thomas coming in, 66% completion, number one in the league tonight, 16-32 for 184, one touchdown. Evans in the backfield, offset right, trips to the right, Eagle showing blitz with five. Thomas looking left on second and ten. Thomas steps oh. up, broke the tackle, still at the 30-yard line, running laterally. Near side, numbers 25, down to the 22-yard line as he runs across the sideline and into the track with Brinson the closest. That should be an App State first down. That should have been a sack because I thought we had him there. Looked like it was Ellis. 
Ellis tried to catch up to him. Bird did as well, running towards this near side. That was a 10-yard run and a first for Ab. 9.50 and moving. Georgia Southern leads the 20th-ranked team in the country on the road, 24-7. to That's really the first time tonight that he's really taken off and run with the ball. He's been a lot more careful this year because of getting knocked out of the Georgia Southern game last year. Evans on the belly play running right at fans don't like that because it only gains two yards sticking him. along the right hash down to the 20-yard line. I mean, he's only tried to run it three times for 12 yards. And this is a guy that's got good wheels. Elijah Campbell, redshirt freshman from Gatson, Alabama, makes the stop. That's even better for the Eagles because that clock keeps winding. It's approaching nine minutes with the Eagles leading by three scores. Thomas Evercombe has Evans in the backfield with him, two wides. Extended off the line of scrimmage. This is second down and eight at the Eagle 20. Thomas looks right, eyes right, looks middle, spins away from another sack, running out to the left. Thomas dumps it out left, caught at the 16-yard line. Williams near the sideline. Liptrot turns him in, avoids Rutledge, stays in bounds at the 10-yard line. That is an Appalachian State first down as Malik Williams makes his career Kai seventh catch. But now 8.50 left, and as soon as it gets spotted, it's going to run again. Again, we come with an outside linebacker blitz trying to get to Zach Thomas. He's able to get outside of it. He sees Evans. He could have tucked it and ran it, or he could toss it over to Evans wisely, throws it to Evans. Bird committed to Thomas to make him throw. Luckily, Williams did not get into the end zone. Evans the running back, 57 yards, 15 carries. Left hash, first and goal at the 10. Thomas from the hash, looking, end zone, oh. caught for the touchdown. Corey Sutton stayed in bounds, nearly a jumping pick for Reynard Ellis. Sutton had crept inside of Monquavian Brinson, and he has his second receiving touchdown of the year to inch App State within 24-13 with 8.22 left. Needed those three points. Hopefully get them back. Good opportunity here. App only took 216 off the clock. Eight play 67 yard drive to cut it to 11. Staten on for the extra point. Made his only extra point of the evening, but he has missed a field goal from 29. That was going in the opposite direction, though. The debris is floating around. <laughs> this is wild. Take a missed extra point here. Or a block, scoop and score. You like to call for those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a Piece of paper tumbles onto the field right behind the kicking area. That extra point is good from State. Take our last in-game timeout with 8.22 left. 24-14 Georgia Southern on top. Queensboro National Bank and Trust has locations all across Georgia. Stop in and you'll see how personal and uncomplicated our service is. Queensboro equal housing lender, member FDIC. Second touchdown pass of the night for Thomas. It is Eagle football when we return. Up 10, 24-14 from Learfield IMG College. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Georgia Southern Sports Network. App State has cut Georgia Southern's lead to 24-14 with 8.22 on that fourth quarter clock. A 10-yard passing touchdown from Zach Thomas to Corey Sutton. First time those two have hooked up tonight in the end zone. He hit Malik Williams at the end of the first half, which got App within 10-7. But Georgia Southern thoroughly dominated the third quarter thanks to chunk running plays. Kennedy, a 68-yard rushing touchdown on third and three. Shy Words took off untouched, 55 yards for a score, which put the Eagles up 24-7 and gave App its biggest deficit all season. But if you're Georgia Southern, you've got to be wary of an onside kick here. You have to be. There's a lot of time left in this ball game that you may not have to onside kick and the reason I say that is the two scores for App State they've been able to accomplish that the first one in a minute 42 and then that one was two minutes and 16 seconds they've shown that they don't need a whole lot of time to score they just got to get the ball back but they as we say that they are lined up for an onside kick I think they feel if Georgia Southern gets the ball back, they may not see it again. There's still 8.22 left, and the ball will fell off the tee. That's going to be tough to... No, we're going to call a timeout there and regroup. Okay. That's we're going to call a timeout and regroup on this, which if nothing else, they could come back and kick it, forced us to burn a timeout. Again, this thing could come down to the Y, and remember, we're into the win. They have the win at their back. App has not tried an onside kick this, this season. But remember, the Mountaineers have the pedigree of being number 20 in the country. They are 7-0, first Sun Belt team to ever start a season 7-0, 4-0 in the league. They've won nine straight against league opponents. They've won 14 in a row here, 13 in a row overall since Georgia Southern got after that you-know-what nearly a year ago in Paulson Stadium. What a great night that was. 
and the Eagles are 8-22 away from making another and even better memory. Have not won here in 12 years. It's been a lot of heartache, and the games haven't been close. The five losses by a combined 169-66. to Looking at a quick stat. Last year, something like under 10%, around 10% of the onside kicks were actually recovered. Yeah. Year prior was 23%. So we do have the good hands people in there. It's still set up like it's going to be an onside. But App State, even if they kick it deep, you've got your hands team in, and Kennedy is situated in between the hashes at his own 21. But they are lined up like they're going to onside kick this. Five guys towards the left hash. Staten has it set up, four on the near side. Now they send two this way. Four have to be on one, six on the other, and the ball the actually wall. did roll off the tee. It's going to be tough to do an onside kick with somebody holding it because you've got to kick the top of the football to get the bounce. You don't want to kick somebody's finger. No, you don't, and the ball, go back to the win. It, I don't know the if they're going to be able broke. to do this. He might have to go one step and say a prayer. And if it's inside 10, let it go out of bounds. Has to kick it with more gusto. Yes. Jay Bowdry does recover. Great to see him back at the Appalachian State 45. Took it off a quick hop and went down just outside the hash. Short field for Georgia Southern. I'd like one more score. I'd like another score, preferably six. Yeah, oh, there's no doubt. De definitely need a touchdown here. I mean, you got to... <laughs> You got to keep the ball, eat the clock, and put a touchdown on this. So if you give it back to App State, we just shown what they can do. Guard the football, no senseless turnovers here. Be smart, and don't get too conservative either. You know what I mean? Don't play to look. Don't play not to lose. Play to win. Didn't know that App State liked Steel Dragon. Who knew? Hey, they were playing Luke Bryan during pregame. I'm I sure they were. That. I'm sure they were. Diamond backfield. Cam Brown is actually aligned as the pistol back with LaRoche and King, the other two sidecars. Two wides. Brown shuffles right. Dive coming back to the left. LaRoche, he had the hole in the left side, but broke back to the right. And DeMarco Jackson, the outside linebacker, pushed him backwards. Called that a one-yard gain to the 43. But the operative thing for Georgia Southern now, run clock. Run clock. Run clock. You got to get the first down. Can't be in a third and long situation here. Got to have some pickups. Eagles get to the football with still 20 on the play clock, leading 24 to 14. Center judge actually comes in and holds the football for backer so he can put his hand on it. King LaRoche split gun, two wide H back right. Cam Brown, second and nine at the app 43 after the onside was recovered. Eagles working clock at snap with five. Wurtz keeps it up inside, gets to the 40-yard line, hit hard from in front. But Shy in between the hashes, gets to the 39 for a gain of four, setting up a third down and five. This one won't get snapped until there's under seven minutes. I like, their, ten. I like their numbers matched up on the wide side of the field for the option. We run it to the short. Shy keeps it, tries to get that seam right up there. Not able to do it. Kennedy checked into the ball game. Georgia Southern 5 of 11 on third downs this game. The clock will grind. 7.05, 7.04, 7.03. 3rd and 5 at the app 39, leading by 10. Here in Boone, press coverage near side, blitz being shown, Jolly pulls off, down to three, here's the handoff, Kennedy running left, dragging, man gets down to the 37, but he is still three yards short of the first out, attempted to bounce that, DeMarco Jackson out of Broom High in Spartanburg made the play, if I'm Georgia Southern, I'm letting this go down, I'm possibly calling a second timeout, and I'm going for this, I'm not kicking a field goal, All I know I'm going is for this. Coaches on the sidelines are livid at something. They ran down immediately trying to get the attention of the ref. It's fourth down. Eat the clock. Go for it. You can't kick a yeah. field goal here. you got, you got to go for it. You this. might have a chance to punt. If nothing else, maybe you get them to jump off sides. 15 on the play clock as they break the huddle. Ransom right, Mashad left. Fourth and three at the app 37. Split gun for Wurtz. App has nine in the box. Snap. Works, fakes to King, running to the left, 35-yard line, stretches oh, to the 34, he's close, I don't think he got it though, he got down to the 35, he didn't get it, he did not get it. Did not cut up. Josh Thomas got him, 
And that is short by a yard. App's going to get the ball back with 6.05 to play. We right idea. Not. Right idea. Just a little bit short. Right idea. Cut up. Yep. You, you can't run to the sideline. you got to cut up. I like the fact that we ran away from Demetrius Taylor. He's that great defensive back, to, or defensive end that we talk about for them. One of the best ones out there. He's the second leading tackler tonight. The problem is on that side is their leading tackler, and that's Gaither, the linebacker. He comes up and makes the play. App State has the ball. First down and 10. 6.05 left to go in this ball game. Three timeouts for App State, but one stop for Georgia Southern might be enough to do it. Well, it's four down territory for them no matter what. Starting this possession from the 35, four wides. Evans is to the left of Zach Thomas, who's thrown for 204, two touchdowns. Neither team has turned the ball over despite the inclement conditions. And that's our third three and out tonight. Thomas in the pocket, three man rush, a little dump over the middle, and Evans dropped it. Another drop pass. That's the fourth of the night for App State. Second down and 10 with exactly six minutes to play, and the Eagles leading 24 to 14. But for the App State's favor, it stops the clock. We were there to make the tackle. The clock would have ran, so it wouldn't have picked up but two yards for him. Almost getting to Thomas. He has got a very good ability of getting rid of the ball right before he gets hit. The only sack tonight for Georgia Southern came in the first quarter from Raymond Johnson, the third. Four wides after this gun snap. Eagles bring extra pressure. Thomas hit as he throws, looks left. Deflected and could have been picked, but not. The ball was intended for Hennigan and Leptrot about had his first pick of the year. Third down and 10 for Georgia Southern with 5.54 to play. That close to possibly cinching this. He was breaking on the ball and then realized, oh my gosh, I, I might have could have gotten it. Did he push off at all? Give some props to Dylan Springer for getting to Thomas as the ball came out of the right hand. So we got away with one. I didn't say that. You said that. I did. <laughs> it's okay. Wind is blowing that the pylons have blown over on both sides of the field. 3-4 defense for the Eagles. It's third and 10 at the 35. Extra blitz. Thomas looks right, throwing in the slot. Up high, but that ball is caught at the right hash at midfield. In front of Duncan, it's Malik Williams that has his eighth catch. And that moves the chains for Appalachian State oh with 5.46 left. It's a 10-point game. Eagles couldn't get off, couldn't force a fourth down at least. Chains now set. With 5.36 left, here's the snap. Thomas looks left. Thomas down the middle. He has the middle. He's open. And oh, oh it's no drop. Duncan wasn't ready for that because the ball sailed away from Williams. It caught him in the left arm. Second time this drive that nearly ended with a pick, but another second and 10 for App State. How many is that, four tonight? Four that could have had him two the last few plays. The catch for Williams went for 14 on the third down and 10. 5.31 remaining in Boone. Georgia Southern wants that bus ride back down the mountain to be one with a W. That clock is stopped. We need it to be running. Williams checks in as the sidecar to the right, trips to the left. Eagles bring four. Thomas double clutches, looks out to the left sideline, and through the hands of Keyshawn Watson at the 45 at Georgia Southern. My goodness, he was wide open. Drop number five, and the second this drive. Thomas doesn't know what else to do. He's putting him on the money. I hate to say it, but... They're trying everything they can for us to win the game on that. They're, they've got to make those catches for that quarterback. His stats aren't going to look accurate because of that. Backup running back is in the game, Marcus Williams Jr., by the way. App had a third and 10 earlier this drive. They're 5 of 13 tonight. 24-14, Georgia Southern right hash. App at its 49, third down and 10. Blitz coming from the far side. Thomas steps up. He could run for this if he wants to. Finally decides late. Bleem was held not called. Eagle territory 40. Thomas down inside the 30 and slides for a first down. Said he could run it. It was wide open. Thomas with a 21-yard keeper. 5.15 left. It stops to set the chains. It's going to wind again. They're going to spot at the 29-yard line. Thomas took the chance because there was nobody in the middle of the field. Run this to Williams, bouncing right, working with a 25, stays up, broke a tackle, Brinson, 20-yard line up the sideline, 15 to the 10, and out of bounds near the 9. Five minutes exactly left, 20-yard run by Marcus Williams, the reserve, in there for Evans, as App is trying to cut this to possibly three. Oh, my. Good news is the clock is running inside of five minutes despite App having all three timeouts. Thomas, quick snap, fade route, back right corner. How did he catch that ball? Flag down, but Sutton caught it anyway. Touchdown, App State. It's going to be interference on Brinson. Sutton made the catch to cut it to 24 to 20 with 4:47 left. Foul's going to be declined, and App can cut to three with a PAT. Pass interference, defense number four. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. We talked about their ability to score quickly. 
That was a quick eight play drive. One minute, 18 seconds. One minute, 18 seconds. All three scored of their the touchdowns. last 14 points. Georgia Southern was up 24 7. Now it's 24 20, 447 left. And App doesn't need to go onside kick after this. Here's the extra point from State, and that's through. Well, here's what you're down to if you're Georgia Southern. You're going to get the ball back. You pick up a first down. You make App use timeout. You're going to win this football game. But you've got to get a first down. Outside the big plays, we've had a long drive. It didn't get any points out of it. Those three points are going to hurt. Got to find a way. We did mention this, but App State does have all three of its timeouts, and you know the Georgia Southern is going to be keeping it on the ground, likely needing one first down, maybe two, to force them to burn the timeouts, then they can occupy it for the rest of the contest. Stop by the clubhouse in Statesboro. There's fun for everyone with go-karts, mini golf, bowling, laser tag, spin zone, batting cages, and a state-of-the-art arcade. Join us at the clubhouse where fun is done. App is starting to show the form of the number 20 team in the country, scoring 14 straight, and they've got it within 24-21. Two State is lining up. I'm sorry, Danny. Up, lining up to kick it straight away versus an onside. App was still down 17 points with under nine to play in the fourth quarter. Kennedy deep. Eagles expecting onside again. I don't think that that's going to be the case because App's got all three timeouts. Ball fell off the tee, and Staten actually brings in Smith, the Caden Smith, the reserve safety to hold again like he did a little bit earlier. Georgia Southern is playing with the hands team. Maybe they go middle dribble or something fancy. But App's got some momentum. Georgia Southern's got to get a first down, though. It's going to be a deep kick. No. They want this to go because then they can get good field position. Get to the 10-yard line and rolls out of bounds. Smart move, though. It goes out of bounds, and the Eagles take possession at the 35. Ref Mike is pretty much useless because of the win. It was a smart decision, though. Bad result for App State, yes. but good idea. You've got the good hands people up there. You kick it short. Great field position because they have no blocking. And, and you think to yourself, maybe their guy back there will not try to fair catch it. What this would mean to Georgia Southern if they could finish this off. Make App use timeouts, get first downs, and then get into victory. Eagles are running for 331 yards. They need to do it a couple of yards at a time. We've got a stoppage on the far side. The extended chain man cannot do so because the chain got tangled. So after the kickoff went out of bounds, they are now set right hash 35 yard line. 447 to play. Georgia Southern 17 point lead is down to 3, 24 21. Wurtz has Kennedy and King with him. Wurtz running the option right. Pitch to King. That looks bad. But King breaks a tackle, stays in bounds at the right side numbers, and got a yard up to the 36. No, er, Trey Cobb at a way cross in Ware County about to have a tackle for loss, but King at least broke from him and moved it up a yard. App is not using a timeout, so this clock is inside of 430. Second and nine, 36 yard line. It will go under four with this play. Got to get a first down. Yep. Kid Brewer, low rowdy. King and Kennedy, your split gun. 4.05 left. Play clock to six. Right hash. Snap. Works handoff King. Oh, Breaking left. Nice. Cobb got him. Gaither pushed him backwards. No gain. Third and nine. 3.55 and moving. I think App just burned a timeout because the clock has stopped at 3.55. Took a while to get the signal in. App has two left, and now Georgia Southern needs to find a way to get nine. App playing some motivated football with back-to-back -back passing touchdowns. Both to Corey Sutton this quarter. A 10-yarder and a 9-yarder. He's up to five catches, 62 yards. Thomas with three passing touchdowns, 20 of 40, so the completion percentage, not where it usually is. But remember, he's had five drop passes. The Eagles have only sacked him once. And last drive, App converted third and 10 twice. Hit Williams for 14, and then he ran for 21.
at the very least, Georgia Southern can make App use its second timeout. But you have got to dig deeper than deep and find nine yards some way, somehow. Again, you're going into the wind, though. You've got to find a first down. You've got to get a, something. The momentum has totally shifted. Let's hope the bell tolling is not symbolic. Three wides, split gun. App shifting to the strong side. Kennedy motions out of the backfield left. Wurtz has it on 39, 26. Screen set up. And it's an in. Was that a fumble? He batted it down. App recovers and they score. This is being called a touchdown unless there was an incompletion that just didn't get. There's incomplete. No touchdown. No touchdown. App's going nuts. I don't think they realized. But that it was an incomplete pass. Akeem Davis Gaither knocked it down. And what's worse, App doesn't have to call a timeout. They're going to get it back with 3.54 to play. No touchdown on the recovery. Because it stops the clock. It's the fourth three and out. And I want to say that's three in a row, three and outs for us. Well, you had the three yeah, we, and out, and turnover on downs yeah, on four plays, and then this three and out. So close enough. Number 98, to back to the Georgia Southern's going to ask its defense to make a stand. Back to punt. Can you play field position? Kicking into the wind. From the 36, Eagles only gain one yard on three plays. App does not come after it. Punt safe. We almost hit our own guy. Not a great punt. It's low. Hops towards Hennigan. Takes to the far side hash at the 27. Goes down right away. Eagles covered it well. Najee Thompson downfield out of Boiling Springs made the tackle. 37-yard punt. 345 to play. Eagles have earned a chance to win this game, but App has shut down Georgia Southern's offense, and they've scored the last two touchdowns, largely converting on third and long. Put the football officially at the 28. Georgia Southern 24, the number 20 ranked Mountaineers 21. You know App's going to go tempo. Another issue with the chain. This is the second straight time that those chains on the Georgia Southern bench far side are... Knotted up like a shoelace. You know, maybe Thomas throws that interception. He's been so close four or five times tonight. Maybe it's maybe it's time for one of those. He's had all day. Got to figure out a way to get to him. Evans is in as the pistol back. Three wides spread to the right. Ball tucked inside the left hash. App running the stretch with Evans. Big hole left side, 35. Up to the 40. Stumbles ahead. Back towards the center. And he's down at the 44. We talked about it going into half. Passing game will open up your running game. They're such a strong running game, Danny, and it hasn't worked for them tonight. Now it is. Georgia Southern may need to regroup. They may need timeout to talk about this. That went for 16. Stretch again coming to the right. Evans from the 44. That time it's bottled back in as Ellis turned it back, and Baldry made the stop up to the 47 for a gain of three. Second down and, and seven with 3.13 left. Georgia Southern by three, but App is driving left to right, and they've got the win at their back. They want to score. Don't leave enough time on the clock. Thomas, hands in the fanny. In front of him, Claps has the snap. Looking left, Eagles blitz again. Ellis jumped. Thomas didn't throw. Thomas sprints ahead. Vleem got him as he slid at the 50-yard line. Only gains three. Eagles finally were able to not only bring pressure, but have that second wave stop him four yards short of the first down. He's a good one. I thought that quarterback from ULL was good. Of course, the LSU's quarterback is the best one we've seen. But this, this guy, he's awfully good. C.J. Wright in at the middle of the 3-4 defense. 2.30 left, up three in Boone. Haven't won here since 07. Evans to the right of Thomas, four wides, third and four at midfield. Thomas has the snap against the four-man rush, looking in a slot. That is incomplete. Incomplete. It's down to a fourth and four from midfield, intended for Sutton. Brinson was draped on him. Stop the clock. Down to, well, App does have the two timeouts, but the Eagles could give themselves such a boost with a stop. Again, you got to keep an eye on what here? Thomas. Drop back to pass. He's had all day. It opens up. He has the wheels in order to run it. App is 6 of 6 on fourth down this year. Only team in the country that's 100%. My goodness. 24-21 Eagles. 2-20 left in Boone. Trips left. You've got to watch the draw if you're Georgia Southern. Here's the snap. Thomas looking. It is. Oh! It's incomplete. He looked in the quick slot for Williams, and the ball skipped by him. Georgia Southern takes over with 2-16 left. It looked like it could have been a pick as it bounced. 
just haphazardly into the air waiting for Duncan, but now for Georgia Southern, the case is still the same. One first down, you take a knee because they only have two timeouts left, and you have better field position. I have to apologize to Danny. I do try not to scream like that over him, and that one I thought was an INT. And it, I, I just, we've been begging for one all night. First, I thought we finally got one. First time that app has been stopped on fourth down all year long. Oh, Midfield, please. right to left, 216 to play. The situation is the same. You get a first down, the Eagles can cinch it. Play to win. Play to win. Wirtz, five yards deep in the gun. Kennedy to his right. Wirtz, counter play left. Kennedy hangs on. Franklin hit him, so did Bear, down to the App State 47-yard line for three. App's got to call a timeout, and they do so with 2.11 left with second and seven upcoming. So you've got probably three plays to get seven yards. App down to one timeout. Russ, how's it feel down there? Is it getting any colder, any windier? How are the players? Well, the, uh, the players and the coaches don't mind one bit. They're, they're obviously focused on this football game right now. A lot of energy on both sidelines here in the fourth quarter. As far as the weather conditions, snow flurry starting to fall again down here. Uh, the wind may be dying down just a hair, but the temperature is falling. Uh, I mean, the wind's taking all the heat off of everybody. Everybody's out here in jackets, huddle around space heaters. I mean, th these are some of the worst conditions we've played in. One first down for Georgia Southern. One first down. Second and seven at the app 47. Mountaineers just failed on fourth down for the first time all season. Kennedy offset left, trips right. Ran a counter play last time. Here comes Murray in motion on second and seven. Kennedy on the dive. Jackson hit him oh, at the line of scrimmage. Third and seven upcoming, and app just had to use its final timeout with 2.06 left. For Pete's sakes. You talk about in order to convert on third down and make our percentages good, you got to get some good yardage on first and second and running that called dive okay here's where you're at though apps out of timeouts this is two down territory for georgia southern unless it's too long of a chance then you could certainly punt oh yeah you're not going to give these but guys. if it's fourth and one i don't think you punt uh, i think I'm, we're just trying to create yeah. the various scenarios i think it's fourth and one i think you're trying to get them to jump off sides and act like you're going to and rushing it and then if that's the case you have to take a timeout or maybe or something along those lines, but you can't give the ball to App on the 40-yard line at all. I mean, they've already shown that they can score. Yeah. They can score quickly. They've proven it already. Third and seven, timeout over. App's out of timeouts. From the 47, King and Kennedy both back there to change up where this could go. App loads the box with eight, two wides. Wirtz follows King, <laughs> nothing. Follows King right, gets to the hash. I don't know if that was... An option player simply works, just looking to gain something. But after a three-yard pickup on first down, the last two plays go for zero. 148, 147. The clock will get down to about 115 before the Eagles can either let it run out and punt or call a timeout. If I'm them, I'm just letting it run out, taking five. That could decline. And let's see if Anthony Beck can play coffin corner. Down to... 128, 9, 8 on the play clock. Chad Lunsford is standing by one of the officials. I mean, they're going to call timeout and then punt the ball. You don't want to give up any yardage here. There's and you timeout. also got to keep in mind that App State's going to come all at you, of course, right? If one. they can get it. But if they block, but if they do a personal foul on that, we get the ball. They know they're going to get pretty good field position. Again, they're going to get the ball back with a minute 15. You, again, we talked about it all day so far. Their first score was a minute 42. Their second score was two minutes and 16. Their last score, they just drove down the field, was a buck 18. All they need is a field goal to tie. But they did just fail on fourth down near midfield. 120 says the scoreboard. Georgia Southern leads the 20th ranked Mountaineers 24 to 21. We've seen rain, we've seen wind, we've seen snow. I feel like James Taylor should be writing another song somewhere. Eagles are going to punt. This is the smart play from the 47. Hennigan deep. If you're app, you almost have to come after this, don't you? Uh, but again, if you do and you hit the kicker, you get you sealed the game. But is that but, a risk you take? Yeah, you give your you give your guy a chance back here, and you give your quarterback a chance. Two times Beck has pinned App inside the ten. He also had one down of the thirteen. Low snap. App does not come for it. 
Beck's punt is high and short away from Hennigan. Hits the 25. Back inside 20. Rolling. Hennigan not going to touch this one up. It rolls and rolls and stops at the 16 where Lane Ecton picks that up with 1.10 left. App is out of timeouts. 24-21 Eagles. This is where the rubber meets the road. That would be one turnover on downs. The last five possessions. Three and outs, and turnover on downs. Here's the game, guys. Eagles have been within an interception five different times. Thompson or Thomas has had five drop passes, 20 of 42 in the game. Evans is his running back with three wides right. Left hash is where the ball is set, 16 first and 10. 108 left. Thomas looks for man rush, throwing quickly, and it's on the ground looking for Sutton incomplete. That was a bad throw. Sutton was open in front of Brinson, but it's almost like he threw a ground ball to him. Getting a little bit of pressure to him, just not in time. Hard to get a grip on that ball. 106 left. He's 20 of 43, but stats don't matter if they can pull this out if you're App State. The clock is stopped. Thomas puts his troops back on the football. He's missed his last three passes and five of his last six. Second to 10 at the 16 with trips right. Thomas looking out to the left. That's caught barely in bounds and then out of bounds. Malik Williams was the slot receiver. Virgil ends up pulling it in in front of Liptrot. But the football at the 28 gain of 12 first and 10 with a 101 to go. The simple out pattern. Liptrot lost his feeding. Lost his feeding. Lost his footing. Fell down. Chains move. Clock stops. Ball on the mountain here, 28. Stays on that left hash. Georgia Southern with three across the front. They bring four with a blitz. Thomas on the left hash back of the 20, throwing it. It's almost picked, and it falls incomplete. App wants interference. They've wanted it all night. Ellis jumped as high as he could, but the ball jumped out of Thomas's hands. And another second down and 10 for the Mountaineers. Second time this drive down to 57 ticks in the fourth quarter. If you're going to call the other one earlier that the, it was not catchable, then uh, I'm not sure you can call that either. Might have got a little bit, got away with a hold here. Letting them play, I think, is what they say. 24-21, Georgia Southern. Led by as many as 24-7 with eight and a half to play in the fourth. Eagles bring four again. Thomas pumps. Thomas middle, left hash, running for the 25. Thomas going to keep. 40 seconds left, running laterally, and gets out of bounds at the 33. We're going to have a flag. holding, hopefully, back here. Yeah, that is a flag that's down back at the 21 as the clock shows 48 seconds left. App's only been called for three penalties this game. It looks to be in the area of offensive holding. Vleem certainly thinks it is. Holding, offense number 70, 10-yard penalty, replay second half. This has not been Mr. Hodges' night, I can tell you that. <laughs> 48 seconds remaining. The snow is coming down harder. It is pretty, though. Oh, yeah. Pretty up here. It's just blowing all over the place. Back at the 18-yard line, second down, and we'll say 20. Need to get the 38. Yeah, they marked it at 20. Let's see if the Eagles can finally get to Thomas. They only bring two zone blitz. Thomas looking out to the left sideline. That was caught, and it's inbounds. Virgil didn't get out of bounds in front of Liptrot. Clock running, 38, 37, 36. The catch went up to the 28 to get the 10 back. It's third and 10, 24, 21. Eagles down to 30 seconds. Thomas claps, trips right, looking, right, still looking. Eagles surround him. Here comes the extra pressure, throwing short. Caught Evans, 30-yard line, jukes up field, 35. Evans gets out of bounds at the 36, but he's still short of the first down with 21 seconds left. But he's within range for a Hail Mary or to get down there, at least get the first down. You get the first down, move the chains. Oh, the Eagles, have, Eagles have two guys down. Wright and Bowdry. It's the third time for Wright. Bowdry's second time. App is thinking that Georgia Southern is trying to do the possum play to okay. limit the tempo, but it was out of bounds, so the clock's not running anyway. And Bowdry gets up off the ground mad. Wright's cramping. CJ Wright's cramping. We've had a lot of cramps tonight. That's well, odd. And so is Bowdry. Look at Bowdry. Now that hurts. That yeah. hurts. Bowdry Especially hurts. in the cold. And Bowdry's still talking smack. Need to get him off the field. That offensive line we've talked about, there's not a lot of love between these two teams. There's going to be some jawing, Danny. You know it's yeah. going to happen. Just got to be a, It's okay. I mean, it's going to happen. Vleem's checking back into the ball game. Ecton's in the game. Now they're going to call this fourth and two, spotting it at the 36. App needs its own 38. They're out of timeouts. 21 ticks on that clock. Two wides each way. Evans is in the gun with Thomas. 24-21 Eagles lead. 
Here's the snap, four-man rush. Thomas looks to the right. Sutton caught it, then backed out of bounds, past the 40 to the 41. That is an app first down with just 17 seconds left. Again, they have to get in field goal range to tie or throw a touchdown to win. you got to keep everybody in front of you and keep them on the field to play. Same formation, two spread each way. Inside the right hash from the 41, Evans is the running back. Eagles bring the blitz from the far side. Thomas looks down the middle. That is caught at the right, Eagle 38. Oh, they're saying the ball dropped the ball. They're saying incomplete. Our players are. They need to make call timeout for they a review. They need to look at it. I'm trying we to get, to get the a spike. review. Call a timeout. Coach. There's the whistle. The ball was at the Georgia Southern 38. They called it incomplete. Is, there's the call. It was overturned. Incomplete. Incomplete is the call. Oh, there's an incomplete pass. So instead of being a possible 55-yard field goal for Staten, you move the football way back to the other end of the field with 12 seconds left. Replay, gentlemen, is already on the field, so this certainly would get Not looked at. Review. But remember, the call was turned to incomplete on the field. It is an incomplete pass. It should be reviewed. I have no problem with that at all. That's This is too important of a game, down to the wire, to be decided on something like that. It should be reviewed. I would just it, hope it goes our way. It would have been a 21-yard reception had it stood. App would probably have had to spike the football and bring Staten on for a career-long try. The giant video board off to the right is not showing a replay. Usually you would get that for the home team. But all we're waiting on is to see what old Wayne Winkler tells us. He has the headset on near sideline. Here we go. Here we go. Now he dropped it. That ball came out. That ball came out at the end. The replay happened very quickly. we got to win this game. Don't want to go into overtime. And App's already walking back up the other end of the field. I think they know what the case is. Do not want to go into overtime. Any tackle inbounds that's not a first down could conceivably one out the clock. That's something to also think about as well. First down's going to stop the clock. Out of bounds is going to stop the clock. Winkler takes the headset off. Everybody's already assuming the second play. Is complete. You can see the ball slip out of Williams' hands in the right side slot near the hash. So here's what we got. 12 seconds left. 24-21 Eagles lead over the number 20 ranked Mountaineers. If it's inbounds, they reset it to 13. So if they <laughs> are tackled inbounds and it's not a first down, this should be it. Keep it in front of you. Keep them in front of you. Eagles, Cannot have big pickups. Eagles man. playing the double high safety, backing off on the corners. Trips left. Thompson, Thomas claps. Here comes four. Thomas steps up. Throw it to the left. Too short and complete. It was short of the 50-yard line. Looking out to the left for Hennigan. Boundary was close to him. You're down to nine seconds left. And I think Raymond Johnson may have gotten close enough to tug on that jersey. Yeah, I think he might have got his arm, got real close to him. Third and ten. Nine seconds. Keep him in front. Keep him in the field of play. Keep him in front. They change up the formation. Virgil moves to slot right. He is the speedster that we have talked about much of the evening. Evans is the running back. Georgia Southern with three across the front. Here they come. 7-6-5, throw to the right side slot. Head again to catch the 50. Looking for the hack. Looking ladder. Caught at the 50-yard line. Lateral back. Still free caught. Lateral back again to the far side. Rolling free at the 50-yard line. Clock still running. Clock is run out. Clock is run out. Clock is run out. What's the call? The officials right there here There were multiple he fumbles. Down. He's down. Rolling on the field. Fumble was recovered, the player's knee was down. Clock is at zero, game is over. Eagle Nation, that's the ball game! Oh my. What a finish! Georgia Southern defeats number 20. Oh, now they're taking, now they're telling the teams to go back to their sidelines. We've got officials that are telling the teams to stay along the hashes. I'm not gonna get to the game winning call just yet. Hang on a moment, the flag is on the field with Gus. Now they're telling the teams to go back. They're going to look at it. There were multiple laterals. They tried to go with the hook and ladder. Time was out when the play was still going on. I saw triple zero while the last lateral was happening. This game should be over. I All right, Raymond Johnson was the one that recovered the fumble. That's what the official Wayne Winkler told us and was down. But the clock showed triple zero. Right here, it looks like Cooper Hodges got the ball. And I was also wondering if it's when he got the ball, when we were trying to tackle him, if his knee didn't hit the ground because the official was coming in. What a crazy finish. My goodness. We don't have a final yet, even though it's currently Georgia Southern 24 at 21. The head referee, Wayne Winkler, has the headset on. 
So we could be moments away from this being confirmed. It should be Georgia Southern with a victory. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner's knee was down. The clock is at zero. The game is over. You can hear the yelling from the booth next door. Georgia Southern defeats number 20 Appalachian State 24-21. For the first time in a dozen years, they have scaled the mountain and they have planted that GS flag. Taking down the highest ranked team in the history of the Sun Belt. Apps winning streak, done. Home winning streak, done. In the last 15 games, one team has beaten App State, and Georgia Southern has done it twice. And you can bet your bottom dollar it is absolutely well with my soul in the shadow of Howard's knob. Close for comfort, you bet. A victory, absolutely. The Eagles were up 17 with eight and a half left in the fourth. Thomas found Sutton for two touchdowns. They had a shot at the end, but their hook and ladder miracle was an unanswered prayer. Raymond Johnson the third recovers the fumble, confirmed by review. And the Eagles defeat the number 20 App State Mountaineers to win their fourth straight game and send App to its first loss in more than a calendar year. Run back up that hill, run by those buses, drop an elbow, drop a leg, drop whatever you want to, Eagles, because you've done it in Boone for the first time since 2007. Our players going over to our fans who made the trip and braved the conditions and the weathers to say thank you, Southern Pride. Fantastic job you did tonight. You didn't leave, you stayed up there and you played all night. Job well done, and I believe this is the highest ranked team that Georgia Southern has ever beaten in the history of the program. It was October the 25th last year at Paulson Stadium when Georgia Southern beat number 25 App State 34-14. This year in Boone, number 20 App State goes down again. The final from Kid Brewer Stadium, Georgia Southern 24, number 20 Appalachian State 21. As the snow picks up, it seems like it's snowing a lot more on this home sideline than it is on the other sideline. Hugs, handshakes, thank yous everywhere as far as the eye can see on the top of the mountain. Boy, does it just turn the east upside down, the conference. Georgia Southern is right back in contention for an East Division Championship. They are 3-1 and one in the league, four straight wins, 5-3 and three overall, app falls to seven and one and four and one in the conference these guys deserve to celebrate they got a long bus ride but we'll be here for a little bit they've taken the flag running it along the far sideline wesley kennedy the third has it Keep along it with classic. Najee thompson that's Montquavian brinson and donald rudledge helped to their feet such an emotional victory for georgia southern and we will talk about it a lot and we'll do it after this timeout colin lacy rejoins us what a night to be an eagle 24-21 over App State. This is Georgia Southern football. This absolutely is Georgia Southern football from Learfield IMG College. Don't do it.